despite the provisions of the standing rules of procedure of the Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature, the House approves that the plenary city schedule for the 26th of May 2020 begins at 10. I so move. Thank you. Members, I put the notice without the motion without notice. Agreed. 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 Honourable members, uh, the next motion, um, let me just go, I've just received it this morning. Um, there are two from the, from the, from the DA. Um, can I, and I have to go out of my, um, it is from, the first one is from Honourable Stevenson. Thank you, uh, Honourable Speaker. I hereby give notice that I will move in terms of Rule 131.1, uh, noting the horrifying pictures of people squashed together, uh, lining up for either grants, food parcels, or outside shops, illustrate that there's a complete lack of control, discipline, and strategy when it comes to social distancing. Two, that these queues can be potentially become super spreaders of the COVID-19 virus and end up becoming cues of death. Three, that municipalities can legally recruit disaster management yeah. volunteers in terms of Chapter 7 of the Disaster Risk Management Act. Four, that these volunteers could be recruited from community safety and civic organizations. And further noting that these disaster risk management volunteers should be able to explain, engage and encourage social distancing in the various queues that one finds throughout the province. In the city of Cape Town, over 400 disaster management volunteers are in operation, which have been recruited from community structures. Uh, the SAPs alone cannot enforce social distancing across the province. Uh, further noting that over 90 schools have been broken into during the lockdown period and these disaster management volunteers could be utilised to monitor schools as well. The House therefore resolves that the Department of COCTA be requested to engage municipalities in regard to the recruitment and appointment of disaster risk management volunteers in order for lives to be saved in the Eastern Cape. I so move. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Honourable Members, I put the motion. The motion will therefore uh, we be sent back to the portfolio committee in terms of uh, our, our rules. We have a second we have a second motion from the from the DA, from Honourable Cowley. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I hereby give notice that I will move in terms of Rule 131 in the Eastern Cape Province Legisl Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature Standing Rules of Order. Noting that, one, according to Section 132.2 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa in 1996, the Premier of a province appoints the members of the Executive Council, assigns their powers and functions, and may dismiss them. Two, according to Section 132.2 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa, Members of the Executive Council of a province are accountable collectively and individually to the legislature for the exercise of their powers and the performance of their functions. Three, members of the Executive Council are accountable to the legislature in terms of Rule 205 of the Standing Rules of Order of the Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature and Section 133 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. Noting further that the NEC of the Department of Health in the Eastern Cape has failed in terms of moves two and three above, in that she, one, failed to fill hundreds of vacant funded posts despite leading epidemiologists 
warning that understaffing is one of the biggest threats to the management of the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay. To establish sufficient screening and testing programs across the province, which has resulted in inordinately low COVID-19 positive cases and has rendered provincial data inaccurate. There's a big noise in the background. Number three, failed to establish sufficient tracking and tracing teams across the province, which has resulted in close contacts of patients that have still not been traced and who are as potential super spreaders. Four, Fails to time is to sufficient personal protective equipment or, or, or reliable or one, with which to provide yeah. yeah. Please protect me. There's somebody whose microphone is still on. Number five, Double. fails to establish members, a daily data dashboard. Number five, failed to establish a daily data dashboard with real-time statistics which can be accessed by the public in order to form a more coordinated and holistic response to the pandemic. Six, failed to ensure that effective control measures are in place at all entry points to the problem and failed to ensure that all the quarantine for the quarantine quarantine period. These failures have had cumulative negative impact on rights of the citizens of the Eastern Cape to access effective and meaningful health care. But the House resolved that the Premier dismissed the MEC of the Department of Health in light of the points mentioned above in terms of the power bestowed upon him in Section 132 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. I so move. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Cowley. Uh, there was a lot of noise members. Uh, we've tried to uh, deal with certain of the um, issues. Can we please request all members to mute? Because even now I can still hear and I've asked twice that members must please be muted. Can members please be muted? Thank you. Uh, Members, with respect to 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 this uh, notice um, of motion of Honourable Cowley, I want to remind members that we have a practice within the institution that uh, notices of motion and motion without notice are first referred to the multi-party works committee. Uh, this has been a practice, and I've raised it on a previous occasion with another member who is no longer part of the legislature. Uh, where the WOPS committee will then consider the constitutionality and to determine when and how they should be debated if necessary. This motion will be treated in the same way. However, the WOPS committee is specifically requested to look at the motion against the provisions of Section 141 of the Constitution, as it is clear from this section that the House cannot pass a motion of no confidence against an individual MEC. I thank you. Honorable members, we will now go over to, um, to, the, um, to the members' um, uh, statements. I have, it has been indicated that uh, um, there are members' statements for this, uh, for this morning. Um, and I am... Um, appealing uh, also to the MECs uh, uh, that they must be ready to respond to those uh, uh, members' uh, statements in, in terms of our rules. That they have, uh, members only have three minutes, so all members will receive three minutes, and the Premier or the relevant member of the Executive have five minutes uh, to, to respond. I will just go out of my list and then go to the to see the list of, of those members um, that um, that we that we are having that is that is that is that is up there uh, for today. Can we call the first uh, political party? Can secretary?
Pasi, can I perhaps can I give over to respective MC or to the, to the Premier, and then we will follow with the, with the next political party. Um, you may proceed, uh, Honourable Kasim. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Honourable Speaker, the Eastern Cape Department of Education is ill prepared, devoid of solutions since the closure of schools due to the advent of the coronavirus. That over two months has proven too little time for the department to prepare the basics for an in- inevitable opening of schools in the midst of a pandemic. This became clearer as DA public representatives across the province visited schools in their constituencies yesterday, the day teachers were told to return to school. Despite the hollow reassurances that personal protective equipment would be at schools before yesterday, Dololo. The training method would be rolled out and the protocols, Dololo. A solution for social in all crowded schools with insufficient classrooms, Dololo. Plans for school unsafe sanitation, Dololo. Water tank, 931 schools that need them, and water for the 2,427 schools with empty water tanks. Well, we're told they will have to find out when this might happen. So for now, Dololo. In terms of the scholar transport changes needed during the pandemic, guess what? Service, service providers had still not been contracted. So, Dololo. You know, there any questions put to him by the Portfolio Committee of Education, Despite the legal advice of the competent advocates of this legislature and despite rulings of the committee chair, he has instead chosen to act contemptuous of this august house and the good people and constitution that we have all sworn to uphold and protect. As MEC Garde ducks and dives, honorable speaker, and turns up his nose at this house and our constitution and feeds us more to Lolo, I call on the good members of this house to rise up, honor our conscience and our oaths, and put a stop to this reckless and contemptuous MEC as his department and his department before it claims the lives of our children. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable, thank you, Honorable Kasim. Uh, can we rather uh, let me um, rather have all the political parties and then we will get the MECs um, uh, to respond, or the or the or the premiers, there's a need. These are just the statements. Can we then have the um, EFF, and then followed by the UDM? Thank you very much, uh, Honourable Speaker. Critics, Honourable Speaker, Commissioner Zintegiana, EFF Provincial Chairperson, and Commissioner Mlami Maketa, EFF Provincial Secretary. Honourable Fighters and Comrades, I salute you. I must firstly pass my condolences to the family of Amatoli District Mayor on passing away of his wife. I also want to pass condolences to all families whose loved ones passed on during this time of pandemic. Quite a difficult time in South Africa in the entire continent, the time when we are facing the invisible, meaningless enemy with no vaccine. We in the same Cape are the worst affected as we are far behind other provinces in South Africa in any different environment. We were exposed to people sleeping in action for more than 25 years of attainment of cultural freedom. We do not have enough hospitals, no quality health care, no infrastructure, lack of water, lack of sanitation, lack of roads. There is no state department. The pandemic has forced us to focus on our attention to health department, which is with us directionless, vision, and the nightmare. We do not have enough personal protective clothing, hospitals don't have enough beds. Things are being open for healthcare workers are getting infected. If less about them, and it's just not going to be better. As the Namibian donor, premium gum so simple. But for now, tomorrow, the next day, no, please, we will do it. Can I also stand down? Yes, it is the best kind of workers and can and workers struggle and put on the side of the people. We call upon on you, honourable, and attend to the issue of Eastern Cape legislator catering canteen workers. You have not been for two months. We cannot be loud on calling or to order for the state government department. We have in our own backyard, we have food and exploited. Please do something about that. We call on the people of the state to put themselves first. The decision to put the state at level three is effectively end with the lockdown and risking the lives of people. This is not well thought and it's not scientific. Please, people of the state, put this level and put this level five and be extra cautious at home, practice social distance, and save yourself and your family. You are on your own. We call on the people of Eastern Cape to be the same on the first rule as the ill prepared Eastern Cape government education is set to operate. The parents and guardians of the and and children must go and see for themselves that the school that contaminated 
water and sanitation is provided. The PPE are provided, sanitizers are provided, social distancing are here too. And the turning of COVID on COVID-19 actually because we know that is not going to happen. We all know that there are schools in this country that will never have water, that they will never have toilets, schools that will never be communicated during the school year. EFF has completely called for compulsory state quarantine for anyone who has COVID-19. For COVID that would have been a bit to spread the coronavirus. We call upon the central government to play a little role in pushing for endorsement of Umsonyane as a central for for fear and COVID. Honorable member, your time is up. Thank you. Honorable member, your time is up. Thank you. UDM, your three Maybe minutes are up. Your, your, three man, your three minutes are up, Honorable Zebula. UDM, UDM, your three minutes starts now. If there is no one from the UDM that is going to um, do a member statement, I will then go over to to the Freedom Front Plus. Freedom Front Plus, are you in the house? Freedom Front Plus is not in the house. We will go over. Honorable Speaker, yes, honorable you could share. Okay. Thank you, you for the opportunity. Honorable. Thank you for the opportunity, Honorable Speaker, but I got, I've got no statement to make. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Kutsia, uh, from the ATM. Yes, Honorable Speaker, I am available. Yes, Honorable um, Kenya. Uh, must be a opportunity. Kuba asi kela anga. Oko ko ko nda maglele chesle chazang nda fuma na indoba na kekwe ko member statement. Sibulele abanda bas vumbulula irusi zizenga pambi. Thank you very much for that. Sili pondo honorable speaker. Si embarrassed gakuli inzela s s s e patekenga yo Department of Health. Oka nye e patekenga yo e COVID nineteen e Department of Health e province yetu. Lilithazo indoba ke kubeko abantu abasabeki tools go kungel treasure kenga ye PPEs. E kube nukwa kuko i 44 million rents yo oke. E ya ike ya vagan ba kutu ya yotengi PPEs. Asiaz ba kwenze kandoni na everywhere, everywhere honorable speaker kwe akalwa kaba sebenzi ba Department of Health ba kalela i PPEs. And honorable speaker ungaz buta zongi zindo kota au na utikule mesu ikoyo yale yale COVID-19 uku Bude, uba zongi in, in, in health institutions bene PPEs. I was being a pike ya kakilo ntoke on a repulse speaker ngoba, si abona na si Freddy Vali, si abona kumane usiti ke i, I, I protest o koko kwa apote PPEs. Asias ba inoba inga ki inda wanina. Na lo mtu ndiwe water tanks uh, on a repulse speaker. I water tanks si aiva, indoba kwa zi nyinda au si abe kwa as, 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 as far kwa uba mas, mas neti sabandu. Si tatwa njei tenda, si mtu fuma ni tenda, yeme yeme ya niyama tanki Anga hampe, ayo seven to seven. Best thing back in Oko, na long thing we corruption was a good char. Get social COVID nineteen ngoba si thing ba wungum to who affected ngoba who abanya band to bafu to is the bas wrong got on the bafunu te bible and is ya uba ikona lende covid. Kuba was ba wini tenda yet young yet and broke some man's bandwin as lali what to ask me. I um imbi we regulations honorable speaker who saw his ill at the pondwe. Umzekelo honorable speaker kutwa makube linani elinga emotu in ama police atikri ema shan emotu ni wani. Aga uchonja nebanti ima mababu ula bantu. It takes zikwala ngelele normal. Apa 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 kozi ya wasi tu honorable speaker nge ngaiba au ukozi traffic officers uzbona yo zi mileyo zi city zi kate indio ba namba ku enforce wele regulation. I regulation zi so yisi le tu i shops as 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 observe is of says nizi go back to cover and you balance the layo but the the department if an irresponsible for check is but is there and for some reason you know yeah come back on a respect and let us just ask the motion then the kind of it's a hell alone to labor to tell you about a key one this way about the other one but thank you honorable venya your time is up thank you honorable venya your time is up thank you honorable venya your time is up yes uh can we now give over to the anc your time starts now Thanks, Honorable Speaker. ANC moves to acknowledge 
The laudable work in fighting the novel COVID-19 pandemic as led by the Premier Mabuyane and the entire entirety of the executive. We are encouraged that the government response has not been to wait for citizens to approach health care facilities at a time when they are already sick, but government is actively searching for the virus. This is evidenced by the number of people screened and tested in the Eastern Cape. The strategy has allowed government to provide precise interventions timelessly in a number of areas from health, economic sector, and provision of basic services like water, sanitizers, and food to our people. ANC fully supports the gradual easing of the lockdown restrictions as outlined by the president and views such as responsible compared to the approach of political parties who have no mandate, no responsibility. It is easier for the DA as a party of the haves and established business to go to court demanding to walk their dogs during the day and to open all non-essential businesses abruptly. The contribution to the Solidarity Fund, the NC, is further encouraged that across the country, people and organizations have offered assistance by contributing to the Solidarity Fund. As such, all ANC MPLs are contributing 10% of their salary to the Solidarity Fund for a period of three months. Caucus calls for all political parties not to grandstand on this matter or want to earn cheap political points using the pandemic as it is distasteful and insensitive to the executive do not be distracted by the empty noises, but find solace in the words of S.E.K. Nkai. I quote, Abakokayo bonabazanga bapela. Abakalazayo basazalwa nanamta oku. Abazenzis badali iwe kulondo. Silungi sanje pofu nabo bayanamanam. Sike sabanikela ungafisizwe sipela. Thanks, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Chief. Um, thank you to Honorable Mvenya. Honorable Mvenya, please. Thank you so much, Honorable Mvenya. Uh, members, uh, thank you so much to the uh, four political parties that took um, the opportunity to give the members statements. Madam, I will Madam. now call. I will now call upon the. Premier or the members of the executive um, to to respond, uh, noting that I do have an apology for the ADC of Health as she is uh, currently um, in the uh, NCOP meeting uh, where they are having a briefing briefing by the uh, ministers of Kota and the Minister of Health, the NC, as well as the Deputy Speaker that is also part of that meeting representing uh, the legislature in that meeting. I hope I'm over, over to pre- oh, uh, Honorable Mvenya. Uh, this, this is not the legislature, so if you speak and you are unmuted, I will be able to hear you uh, quite clearly. Uh, Premier and the uh, Madam members Speaker, of the executive. Give me a chance. Madam Speaker, cannot give me a chance. I, I, uh, I, unfortunately, I have already called the UDM. There was no one at that point. I have then gone on to the Freedom Front Plus. Uh, they uh, opted not to speak, and I've gone through the list. Unfortunately, please, you must be on your station, and you must be ready uh, to deal with these matters. Uh, over, over to the premier, and or to the members of the executive. Uh, thank you very much, uh, honourable speaker, and uh, greetings to all honourable members in the house and. Uh, all those who are also in the gallery, if there is a gallery. Uh, I would actually ask MECs uh, uh, to come in uh, uh, to answer uh, specifically, uh, particularly around education, etc. Well, I note uh, statements that are raised by a couple of political parties around the issues of health. From where we are seated, we are doing everything possible to address challenges that we are going through. Uh, we're still looking for a, a best practice on this uh, because this has collapsed uh, the world economies and uh, the world uh, health uh, facilities, the first world countries. 
So we can't easily say that uh, there is a, a super perfect way. We are all in a learning curve. Uh, we are not perfect, but we are perfect in the system. That's the reason why we created a platform where we invited every political party to participate so that we work together in dealing with this uh, uh, pandemic. It has never been there. It is catching or uh, exposing everyone uh, every day. So we would expect that uh, people look at that. Uh, calling for all these, uh, I take them to be just quite uh, sensational and uh, political, uh, so to speak, uh, because we're in the middle of a war and we just need to understand that. And the reason that we want to work together on this is to get this advice and these plans. And we don't really seem to be getting advices other than people who are trying to pull us back and be destructive uh, how they raise issues. But I'm noting all the concerns and at an appropriate time we'll give a full account uh, of why do we don't believe uh, to what they've been calling for. Uh, thank you very much. I would give it over to the emissaries to answer specific uh, uh, questions uh, or response to member statements. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you so much, Honorable uh, Premier. Uh, Honorable uh, Gade, MEC of Education. I'm not quite sure if... Uh, uh, yes. Are you in the house? Yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes Speaker. Speaker, let me take this opportunity to respond on behalf of the Department of Education on the member statement uh, raised by Honorable Taxi. We have presented the plan of the Department of Education to the committee, and the committee was quite comfortable with the presentation. We have been issuing a number of statements uh, relating to circulars uh, as to how a then becomes the approach of the department in ensuring that we respond to the returning work plan as, as, as sanctioned by the national minister. We have put systems in place that begins to indicate that the PPE is... Honorable Chair, Honorable Chair, on a point of order. <clears throat> What's the order about, Kasim? No, no, no Honorable, are, Honorable, Honorable Lager. Lager. And, and MC, no. please. Honorable Kasim, what is your, your rule on which uh, point of order are you raising? Can you quote the, the rule, please? Yes, Chair. The, the MEC is misleading the House. Chair, there is a rule in terms no, of... No, no, no. Honorable, Honorable Kasim, please mute yourself. You've had your opportunity. Please, Honorable Kasim. Thank you so much, Honorable Kasim. Honorable Gade, please all remember you only have five minutes within five minutes to respond. Thank you. Yes, we, 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 we are busy issuing uh, the PPEs as we were required to uh, make a proper procurement process as, 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 as per the supply chain management processes, uh, Honorable Speaker. That we have made, uh, we have appointed 88 SMEs of the province across uh, 12 districts in the province. And that is a work that is being done now we are supposed to finish up the recruitment plan of the screeners by, 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 by Thursday and subject them into the orientation course on how to conduct the business as required by the COVID uh, standards and regulations. We are supposed to finish up the issue of ensuring that our schools, as you would understand that some of them don't have tanks and we have appointed um, uh, rent waters to deliver those tanks and ensure that come the end of this week, uh, the waters are available into the institutions of our of our of learning in the province. Number of schools in the province have been prepared in terms of the social distance, in terms of the infrastructure arrangements as dictated by COVID. Uh, for example, a Nyangasina Secondary School has been one of those schools that have shown the country that they are ready uh, for the reopening of, of school. Today, after the house, I'm going to St. Thomas here in, 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 uh, in King Williamstown uh, to demonstrate how ready we are as a province. So that's where we are, Honorable Speaker. We think we can be able to fix up almost everything that is required by law in relation to Thank the COVID-19 and the program of government. 
Thanks, Honourable. Thank you, Honourable. Thank you so much, Honourable Garde. Um, uh, what I do have is the apology from uh, Honourable uh, Gomba. I am. She will be returning to the house later, so there is no response. I think the Premier has already addressed those issues, uh, and he will then follow up on certain of these issues. Honourable Thank Honourable you so much. Speaker. Honorable uh, Nata, are you uh, uh, standing in for Honorable Gomba? Now, I, with your permission, Honorable Speaker, I wanted to comment on the water tanks uh, as raised by Honorable Mbanya. Okay, you, know, you may proceed. Yes, you may proceed. Yeah, okay. Then. My apologies. Okay, thanks, Honorable Speaker. Uh, greetings to the Speaker and all Honorable members and guests. Um, uh, to Honorable um, Benya, we, we are working together with the Department of Water and Sanitation in Amatola Water, uh, which we have been able to deliver water tanks to various municipalities. Uh, the biggest challenge we had uh, at the beginning related to the fact that at level five, uh, hardwares were closed, and therefore the material you need to mount water tanks and buy some other spares were not available, which sort of delayed, uh, you know, the, 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 the installation of the water tanks. And uh, I would therefore urge, uh, however, for now, uh, the municipalities, some have succeeded. Uh, we are more than 70% in terms of uh, the, the installing of water tanks, but we remain with challenges. And I would urge uh, honorable members, if there are specific cases uh, they must then forward to, to the department. We can then make a follow-up with that specific municipality. We have made a follow-up uh, where there were cases of uh, alleged uh, corruption, uh, both in Port St. John's and, uh, and uh, in Musa Hill municipalities. Those matters are being attended to by the department. Thanks, Honorable Speaker. Thank you so much, Honorable Ngata. And thank you to all the members that have made use of the opportunity um, to do their member statements and also for the MECs and the Premier for taking the opportunity to respond. I think as we get used to this process, I think it will, um, it will flow more smoother. But I also want to remind Honorable Members from the political party, you are expected to be in the House when I do call upon you as per the uh, my list that I have, you should be in the house at that particular point in time. Members, we will now proceed with the business uh, for the day. But before we proceed, um, I would like uh, just want to advise that the members of the executive that the WIPS committee has allocated only 15 minutes to each member of the pre executive to present the policy speech. Uh, please, members of the executive, take note, only 15 minutes. I will now ask the secretary to read the first order of the day. Thank you, Advocate Beja. I will now call upon the Premier of the province, to present his 2020-21 policy speech in terms of Rule 2023. Over to you, Premier. Your 15 minutes is starting now. Thank you very much, Honourable Speaker. Honourable Speaker and the uh, Deputy Speaker, members of the House, and the members of the Executive Council, Director General and Heads of Department, good morning to you all. Uh, Honorable Speaker, three months ago, on the 17th of March, to be exact, we were ready to come to this House to present the first policy statement of the Office of the Premier for the sixth administration. However, when the disaster in the form of COVID-19 struck our motherland, as it has done so since late 2019 in many other countries of the world. This is an invisible and a virus that we have never seen before. It is Today, honorable uh, 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 my apologies, honorable speak, honorable uh, premier, my apologies. I am requesting honorable members to please be muted, especially if they are officials. Uh, please, members, it is important that we allow and give respect to the members that are on the floor. Thank you so much. 
Uh, today on our speaker, we have 2,748 positive COVID-19 cases in our province, and we have sadly lost 61 citizens to the virus. Our thoughts and prayers are with the families of all the people who have lost their loved ones. Honorable members, it is also during this period that we lost a former member of this house, the former MEC of Education, Ubao uh, Utoni Mahadu. His family sacrificed a lot uh, in terms of complying uh, with the regulations that are in the relenting pandemic. Uh, there is a silver lining. Our people are fighting back against this virus. We now have 1,335 people uh, who, have recorded, who have recovered in the Eastern Cape. Amongst them are our colleagues, uh, uh, such as the Provincial Commission of Police, uh, Lieutenant General uh, Jinga, and this should assure our people that coronavirus is not a life sentence. We attribute to the low numbers of positive cases, low mortality rate, and the growing number of recoveries from this virus uh, to the lockdown regulation uh, that were put in place by our government, and more importantly, to the, uh, to the outstanding work of the frontline workers, police workers, nurses, and essential workers in municipalities and in government who risk their lives every day to provide critical services to society. To them, we are hugely indebted. I want to take this opportunity in our speaker and members and appreciate uh, the role that has been played uh, and continued to be played by the members of this house. We want to still ensure that we work together in fighting uh, this uh, virus. As we enter the alert level three and other lower levels towards full functionality, we must all remain committed to win this war. We must remain united in this war and we must remain safe during this war. The bigger part for all of us is to save um, as many lives of our people as possible during this pandemic. We will win this war against this virus. We might not win it tomorrow. And we might not win it uh, next month or uh, next year, but ultimately the victory is certain. The policy statement we are presenting today on our speaker outlines the contribution of the Office of the Premier towards the attainment of the priorities that were outlined in the State of the Province Address. All of us must be mindful of the fact that the masses of our people who gave us mandate to be in government are asking themselves the pertinent question, when will the day come that our dignity will be fully restored, when, those, uh, uh, when the purpose of lives will no longer be merely as to survive until the sun rises tomorrow. As the Office of the Premier, we come before this August House uh, Honourable Speaker armed with the budget uh, allocation of 1.1 billion, which reflects 17% increase. We are henceforth allocating 483 million of our budget to Program 1, the component uh, that is uh, responsible for providing strategic leadership management and support services to the Office of the Premier. With this allocation, we intend to get the broadband project into drive, into overdrive implementation. This will enable us to create an enabling environment to facilitate connectivity to government and service delivery sites. We are planning to complete the evaluation and adjudication of appointment of local accredited broadband SMME during the 2020-2021 financial year. In addition, CETA, uh, CETA's partner, Liquid Telecoms uh, of South Africa, is in the process of establishing innovation, a digital skills center in Italian. This center will develop young uh, digital champions to provide ongoing support in schools and all other uh, public uh, facilities. Our priority on our speaker is to provide internet connectivity uh, to uh, 518 health facilities and many more other government um, uh, public uh, entities out there. Some long were allocating 449 million in the 2020-2021 financial year to program two. This is a program that is charged with setting up the provincial administration uh, program uh, program of action and lead evidence-based decision making. In this financial year, yeah, we will complete the work we are doing in Nyandeni and the other number of municipalities that we have been doing under the small town revitalization program. And in the next uh, 2021 medium term expenditure framework, we'll be adding a couple of municipalities, as we uh, indicated in our state of the province address. Uh, we have also established Operation uh, Kaleza Management Office that is being incubated uh, and established at the exec. The PMO aims to improve the capability of the province to execute and deliver successful projects 
through standardizing systems and processing for advanced project management. The PMO will also enable effective reporting on the decision development model, as well as monitor progress for the implementation of economic stimulus investment. With the emergence of COVID-19, the PMO has served as the COVID-19 data center for the province and has equal started looking at incubating the digital transformation projects such as e-submissions, which will be realized through digitizing the paper-based uh, system of government. Uh, Honorable Tiranda Youth, uh, in an effort to address the plight of out-of-school and unemployed youth, especially those who are not in education, employment, and training, we shall initiate scale-up main and mainstream the implementation of the National Youth Service Program in our province as one of the pillars of the presidential youth employment intervention. It is our plan to target the training of at least 5,000 young people in, our, in a variety of economic development opportunities, working together with the Department of Higher Education and CITAS. We also plan to place at least 1,000 Tibet college students in workplace target integrated learning. Honorable Speaker, in 2020-2021 financial year, we are allocating 20 8 million to implement our flagship programs to address youth skills development and uh, the burden of unemployment. In 2020, again, 2021 financial year, through the Youth in Infra Infrastructure Maintenance Program, will ensure placement of 361 young people who were recruited from all districts and metropolitan municipalities. Further to that, an addition of 100 young people will be recruited, uh, trained, and placed for job opportunities in schools in this financial year. We will also mainstream the youth in the ocean, the economy leveraging on maritime and coastal resources to reduce youth unemployment. We are targeting to recruit 300 young people in the 2020-2021 financial year to train and place them as seafarers and also in the hospitality and entertainment industry in, in international cruise liners. We realize that these opportunities and targets will heavily have will be heavily affected by the spread of COVID-19 given the global impact in tourism and hospitality industry. Some of the survivors of the coronavirus pandemic are sons and daughters here in the province who have previously been part of the program with SAMHSA and were placed in cruise liners all over the world and some contracted the virus, came back as positive cases but still recovered. Nebagas we live from Zendane will one day tell legendary story to her children as she came back from cruise linership in Europe and recovered from a rural base Madualeni hospital. Honorable members, these programs represent a snippet of work we, we do as part of coordinating youth development programs in the province. Our young people depend on all of us to realize their poten potential in every sector and space in the province. As a current government that prides itself with inclusive policies that promote the up and uphold the rights of all citizens, including persons with disabilities. We will focus, with, uh, we will focus on uh, deaf community through the number of initiatives, which include training sign language interpreters to provide persons with disability with access to information and standardization of sign language. This time we will also ensure that we increase the number of persons with disability who are employed by the state Furthermore, we'll enhance the participation of persons with disability in the economy. So, we want to use 2020 to respond decisively to the alarming rate of gender-based violence and femicide. In our province, we have been selected as the pilot of the National Gender-Based Violence and Femicide Emergency Response Plan. We are implementing this initiative in our Tango district municipality focusing on Ingo Zahil local municipality. Honorable Speaker, to institutionalize the support to military veterans. A provincial policy on military veterans is currently being developed and will be put into effect in 2020-2021 financial year. This will uh, strengthen not only coordination of support to military veterans, but it will also enhance mainstreaming of the military veterans development in government programs, thereby contributing to their social economic upliftment. Honorable members were glad to report significant progress on the programs of the Eastern Cape X Miners, our targeted outreach programs for the relief and the proper compensation to the more than 300,000 X Miners and their families will receive more focus this year. Eastern Cape X Miners Council, supported by provincial government, working with Nelson Mandela University for 10 VETS, 
consortium have submitted a funding proposal of 349 million over the three years to the National Department of Health. I'm appalled, uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, by the fact that a progressive government like ours has not met and exceeded targets on employment equity, particular appointment of women at senior level. This man made anom anomaly ends in this term. We are also concerned about that, uh, that department are struggling to have persons with disabilities at SMS level. This is something we are going to give more attention. We will intensify our work uh, of affirming women across social economic spectrum. Some long of COVID-19, it is a mood dampener. Uh, it has denied us an opportunity, Human Rights Freedom Month, Workers' Day. It will also further deny us uh, on more other days to come and negatively affected our social cohesion programs. In keeping with the COVID-19 social distancing regulation, uh, the Executive Council has resolved to suspend the commemoration of national days for the rest of the year. Of course, where applicable, we shall mark these days through virtual platforms. Accordingly, we have also resolved to utilize the budget previously allocated for events to support designated groups. Honorable members, the moral decay in, in some of our communities has now spilled over to the, our institution of higher learning. We'll reinforce and further support work being done at uh, the moral regeneration movement as we are engaging the universities, communities, and to restore order and institute of learning in our universities without an increase of violence which has led to unacceptable loss of lives on our campuses. On our two two minutes, two minutes left to me. Honorable Speaker, as members would appreciate that we have three spheres of government that structure. The DC development model will enhance this by facilitating joint planning, budgeting, implementation between all spheres of government. In the same vein, we have initiated the review of the international relations and cooperation. We are working with all our uh, sister uh, organizations of uh, uh, the provinces in other countries, and we'll still be strengthening that cooperation at an international level. We welcome the conclusion of the Africa uh, Continental Free Trade Area Agreement by African Union, as we believe that it will also have us uh, more better exposed to number of uh, continental uh, interactions. The Honourable Speaker, we are allocating 221 million of our budget in 2020-2021 financial aid to Program 3, which is tasked to manage the administration of the public service system and promote accountability governance. In the new financial year, we will finalise the revision of public sector transformation and uh, work with all uh, our uh, stakeholders and uh, to ensure that uh, we recognize the good performance across our government. Uh, at the same time, um, uh, ramp up our work on anti-corruption to deal with corruption wherever it shows its ugly head. Honorable members, we've established the Premier's hotline to enhance response rate to and resolution to development uh, of development and basic service delivery challenges. And that work is being done as we speak. Soon it will realize its full potential. Uh, once it's fully developed, it will integrate all governments. Your time is up, Premier. Your Premier, your time is up. Can in you conclude? Con in conclusion, Honourable Remember, I thought my minutes were taken when I was stopped at some point. Uh, in conclusion, though, Honourable Speaker, uh, we we have plans uh, that, that we're tabling here today to ensure that government will continue working even under this condition of COVID-19. With these plans, we want to restore the dignity of our people and want to ensure that people's of their lives will no longer be merely to survive until the sun rises tomorrow. Thank you very much, uh, Thank you very much. Can the secretary read the third order of the day? Can I proceed, uh, Deputy Chair of Chairs? Yeah, you may proceed, uh, Honorable Speaker. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I, th th thank you. Honorable uh, Deputy Chair of Chess, this year we commemorate several milestones as a country, a continent, and the world of note. Is this 60th anniversary of the year of Africa, also yesterday, noting that we celebrated Africa Day here in South Africa. 
we are also um, uh, reminding ourselves that it is six years since the Amapondo revolt, as well as on the 24th of May, it was 99 years since the Bullhook massacres. We have also commemorated the Shamble massacre as well as the Langa massacre, which was 35 years this year. Honorable members, the Eastern Cape province celebrates also our centenarians. Uh, those are our heroines and heroes that have made our freedom possible. Of note is Utata Vuisili Mini. Utata Robin Gersche and uh, Utata Raymond Mslaba, who was the first premier of the province. Tata Mslaba's memorial lecture, which was scheduled to be held in March, had to be rescheduled to a later date due to the coronavirus outbreak. Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs, the African-American poet Maya Angelou in a book written to my daughter wrote, you may not control all the events that happen to you, but you can decide not to be reduced by them. More fighting words cannot describe the attitude and the resilience we are called upon to display as we are all collectively engaged in attempting to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. And as we learn how to seemingly live for a while yet, with this cloud over us as a country and the new world, a new normal has emerged. In the 1920 financial year, we acknowledge that the financial constraints posed a daunting challenge for the legislature. Hence, we introduced cost containment measures, which was on the official opening of the legislature, taking legislature to the people program, national and international trips, and the containment of meetings and strategic sessions within the Buffalo City Metro. Honorable members, a positive we can draw is on piloting the use of ICT, which allowed for the use of remote audiovisual links to ensure public access to the House during taking legislature to the program uh, in Enoch Mkijima local municipality. The program was also streamed live on YouTube, increasing the reach beyond the Chris Hani district municipality. At the beginning of April, the legislature commenced conducting virtual meetings and house sittings during the lockdown period. It has enabled members to do their oversight and to interact with provincial government, especially to account to the legislator on fighting the spread of COVID-19. Honorable members, I'm happy to announce that MOUs have been signed between the legislature and as well as the legislature and the Office of the Public Protector. Honorable Deputy Chief of Chairs, in suit of the South Africa's foreign policy priorities of strengthening North-South relations, the legislature participated in the conferences of the CPA as well as the Commonwealth Women Parliamentarians within the Africa region and on the international front. Focus areas that emanated from the resolutions which will be following up as the exco of the legislature and the CPA branch are those on gender-based violence, capacity building for members, information and communication technology, and disability mainstreaming. Honorable members, during 1920 financial year, the legislature held two sectoral parliaments, one for people with disabilities and the youth parliament. It is important that the resolutions of these sectoral parliaments are implemented and followed up by the legislature through the oversight program. Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs, we also extend our gratitude to all the houses, especially Bay TV, who have given the work of the legislature exposure. Our outlook for 2021, that the outbreak of the coronavirus throughout the country has had and will continue to have an impact on our operations, thus affecting the activities we wanted to pursue during the financial year, particularly those that require public interface. Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs, it is important for us in the sixth term to reflect on the significance of our thriving democracy so that it becomes a unifying influence during this term. Former Speaker of the First Democratic Parliament, Freni Jinwala aptly captured it when she said, the seed of democracy lies in the principle that the legitimacy of the power to make decisions about people's lives, their society and their country should derive from a choice by those who are affected. This assertion underlines the essence of our democracy and requires of us as members of this house to be acutely aware of our responsibilities if we are to serve the interests of the people and make this legislature a parliament in which the voice of all people become essential to deepen our democracy. Honorable members, in pursuant of the above principles, the legislature has adopted a new vision for the sixth term of the legislature, which is to be an activist and a responsive people's assembly for good governance and improvement of quality of life for all. Honorable members, the oversight function is one of the most critical aspects of the work of the legislature. And as such, this function should be strengthened by introducing KPAs to refocus the work of the committees and to be able to conduct proper quarterly assessments. To this end, we expect all chairpersons to commit by signing performance agreements. 
The oversight function will be further enhanced this term through capacitating and resourcing the research unit. And also in advancing our activist approach, we'll be working towards ensuring that committees will be afforded an opportunity to conduct committee meetings outside the legislature during the course of the sixth term. Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs, a re-engineered model of taking legislature to the people is being designed to make the program more effective and thus cost effective. This financial year, taking legislature to the people program will be hosted uh, in the fourth quarter at the Jout Garbi District Municipality. Honorable members, we are also exploring a new way of hosting sectoral parliament so that we can be impactful and meaningful. In this financial year, we have planned parliaments dedicated to the elderly persons and to women. However, due to the COVID-19 challenge and an agreement with the Women's Caucus, we have resolved to host a Women's Parliament virtually. Honourable Members, Public and Voter Education will become a flagship programme of the sixth term. As part of the Public Participation Programme, we will infuse the promotion of rights and responsibilities of citizens. The COVID-19 crisis presents an unprecedented and enormous challenge since the Spanish flu, which compels the Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature to incorporate healthy lifestyle education in its public education programs. We'll also conduct voter education as a build-up to the 2021 local government elections. We appeal to all political parties in the legislature to also conduct voter education as part of their constitutional work. Honorable Members, Section 65 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa enjoins us to participate in the national lawmaking process and in this regard, we will ensure that all the negotiating and the final mandates required are submitted in line with the relevant legislation. Honourable Members, the process to pass the Eastern Cape Money Bill and Related Matters Amendment Bill has begun, with the draft bill already published in the Provincial Gazette on the 24th of February 2020 for submissions from the public. We are now preparing public hearings during July 2020 and ultimately the adoption in the House. Honourable Member, the Legislature is working hard to ensure synergy between the NOP and its programmes. This has been demonstrated in the processing and finalisation of the public hearings for the traditional courts bill. Honourable Members, a very important bill is also out for comments, and that is the Legislative Sector Bill. These comments will be, should be made from all our stakeholders. It is then important for us to remind ourselves as to start the work for the sixth term that we are a separate arm of the state which mandate within the constitution is to oversight the provincial executive. For the legislature to be optimally effective in executing its mandate, it requires at least 1% of the provincial appropriation to be set aside for its budget vote before any budget is allocated to any provincial department. The legislature will facilitate placement of students in learning programs in the different functional areas of our administration. Some of the priority units EMR include communication, handset, languages and questions, HR, enabling facilities, supply chain and international relations. Honorable members are planned to implement the lifestyle audits, not commence due to the financial constraints in 1920 financial year, but we are now on track and we're just awaiting for provincial treasury to announce the commencement of the competitive bidding. The lifestyle audit does not negate the responsibility of members to declare their interest every year and forms have been sent, but complements that process. Honorable members, one of our primary tasks for this term remains to ensure that there is an effective utilization of resources and maintaining the clean audit outcome for the duration of the sixth term. The budget is allocated to the Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature for 2020-21 financial year is 608.4 million. Part of the legislature's budget for the current financial year has already been top sliced to be directed towards fighting the COVID-19 pandemic. An amount of 40.6 million will be cut during the adjustment budget from the initial, initial allocated budget. On administration, the figures are there, uh, which we are according to all of the of the of the different of the different programs. In conclusion, Deputy Chair of Chair, the plight of citizens in this province is calling for change for their livelihoods, and they entrusted us as members of this house with an enormous responsibility of changing their lives for the better. The renowned basketball legend Michael Jordan once said about people and change. Some people want it to happen, some wish it to happen, others make it to happen. 
words of gratitude I would want to express to the um, political party, the African National Congress, for sending me to lead the institution. I also want to express a word of gratitude to the chief whip, fellow presiding officers, members of the legislature, for your unwavering support and guidance. I would also like to extend a word of gratitude on behalf of the Eastern Cape Legislature to the following members who will be retiring this financial year. Ms. Tela Mjlana, from the NCOP Liaison Office, Ms. Henrietta Mtwazi, Senior Practitioner Benefits, Ms. Mandisi Sauli, Senior Practitioner Benefits. These members of our staff take with them combined 72 years of service, and we need to thank them for their selfless service to the legislature and the people of this province. We wish them well in their future endeavours. I would also like to thank the accounting officer, Mr. Mapulisa, and his service of 20 consecutive years uh, to this province and five years as the Secretary of the Legislature. Mr. Mapulisa's service uh, contract is due to expire in May 2020. I also express my gratitude to the management and the team, as well as the staff of the Legislature for their continued uh, support to the unions for their continued support and robust engagements that have helped us as an institution to make sure that we fulfill our purpose. Honorable members, the depth of my gratitude is correctly captured by African-American poet Maya Angelou when she said in a poem, alone, lying, thinking last night how to find my soul a home, where water is thirsty and bread loaf not stone. I came up with one thing and I don't believe I'm wrong that nobody but nobody can make it out here alone. Alone, all alone. Nobody but nobody can make it out here alone. Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs, I have by table the following documents to the House, policy and budget speech, strategic plan, and the annual performance. I request the House to approve the budget of the ECK Provincial Legislature. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Uh, before we move to the fourth order of the day, um, I would like to acknowledge and appreciate 129 uh, people from participating through YouTube. I know they represent a various organization of stakeholders and they have the interest uh, of the province and the people at heart. Thank you very much and continue to stay with us uh, as we continue with the work of the legislature. And I'll therefore request the secretary to read the fourth order of the day. Thank you very much. Pukwanda lwa kwa sabi lo malise vote esine upuli solo lundo. Can I therefore request the uh, honourable MSC Manilusi to take to the podium? Thank you. Uh, thank you, honourable. Deputy Chair of Chairs, the Honourable Speaker, Premier, um, the Honourable Chief Whip and members of the Provincial Legislature, to the Director General and all our HODs and uh, Team DSD, Botani Nongem Zuwabowit. I am indeed, uh, Deputy Chair of Chairs, grateful for the opportunity to table the 2020-2021 policy and budget speech of the Department of Social Development in the province of the Eastern Cape. Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs, as the Department of Social Development, we derive our mandate from a wide array of legislative policies. However, at the core is the delivery of developmental social welfare. As the White Paper on Social Welfare of 1997 declared, the goal of developmental social welfare is to create a humane, peaceful, just and caring society which will facilitate the meeting of basic human needs, build human capacity and self-reliance. This is the political commitment that I am mandated to realize. Can you mute? Can you mute, please? Diabulela. The Vagalis and Sekile Kulundu Apollo, Nukuba, Isabelos, or Pushi Solo Lundu, Rosa Opala Selangakum, be quiet, and they will go more Kulon into Peg or Ninjan. 
sisa kwandi sa inka tano kubanda badala abanda bakubaze ileyo na seba duane sisa upushi sa ulucha na makosi kazi kuiza kono zuku pili sa nezu shishino sisa ukubeke kanukulu ukushukunyezo kwa makosi kazi na banduana inga loge sekela sa ufikeleleka ya kwa keni nza po ezu lukulima kuipodo letu Honorable members, don't it only marks the last decade of the implementation of the National Development Plan. In this regard, the department will prioritize programs that will have the most significant impact, both immediately and over the next five years. A particular focus will be on the interventions aimed at reducing vulnerability, increasing human capacity, and promoting self-reliance for sustainable human development. Honourable members, we are fully cognizant that several multifaceted social ills continue to confront the province. These include high levels of poverty, youth unemployment, vulnerability, rising social distress in families and communities, high levels of substance abuse, high levels of gender-based violence, and deep-seated structural inequalities. The emergence and the spread of the novel coronavirus pandemic has further aggravated our social economic conditions in the country and the province. The pandemic has resulted in the sudden loss of income for families and individuals alike, therefore deepening poverty and unemployment, increasing uh, reports of domestic violence, increasing hunger and social distress. The role of the department in, the fi in fighting the pandemic is therefore focused on responding to the increased demand for developmental social welfare services, which include the social relief of distress, the provisioning of food for the homeless, the provisioning of social, psychosocial support, and continued protection of people's rights and the sustainability of livelihoods. Honorable Chair of Chairs, the impact of the pandemic and the subsequent regulations of the lockdown and social distancing has resulted in the need for the department to reflect about the nature, to reorientate and re-engineer the method of delivery of our services to our people. The, the demand for the developmental social welfare services has increased immensely in the midst of this pandemic, such that the department has put in place measures to ensure that all services will not be interrupted. Social workers, community development workers will continue to work tirelessly and closely with individuals, families and communities. In addition, significant investment in ICT infrastructural services and innovative communication will be made, thus ensuring greater access to our services. Honourable members, one of the key priority areas of the SIS administration includes building a capable, ethical and digital state, which marks a significant and radical shift from a welfare-orientated stance to a more developmental approach. This therefore means strengthening community development services towards sustainable livelihoods. President Cyril Ramaphosa, in his State of the Nation address, sounded a clarion call for all government departments to integrate services into the national district development model. Honorable members, allow me to outline our intervention programs aimed at implementing policies and appealing social development in line with an inclusive and responsive social protection. On program, on, program, um, on services to families, children, and vulnerable groups, the dysfunctionality of families remains central and a severe reality in the manifestation of social ills in our society. In May, this is attributed to the absence of fathers, poor parenting, abuse and neglect by families, childhood families, teenage pregnancy and substance abuse by family members. In this regard, the department has adopted the family-based model as an overarching approach to address these social challenges holistically. This financial year, we will continue to render services that promote stable, resilient, as well as healthy functioning families. The departmental intervention will conduct comprehensive awareness campaigns on family preservation, fatherhood, parenting programs. On child protection services, our paradigm shift will emphasize a change from statutory services to prevention and early intervention programs to ensure that abuse is prevented before it occurs. 
Our foster care management, the department has managed to clear the backlog cases in compliance with the National Gauteng High Court Order 28, November 2017, which has subsequently been extended for another 12 months. The total budget for this program is uh, 49 million. On early childhood development, Honorable Chair of Chairs, the universal access to early childhood development is the national government priority. While the legislative provision of infrastructure for building ECT centers remains with the local sphere of government, the department complements this function by building and maintaining of these centers. In this current financial year, we plan to do maintenance on 50 ECT centers. The department has budgeted to subsidize 74,959 children between the ages of zero to five years who access ECD programs out of the total of the 503 children in the province who are poor and eligible for funding. This financial year, 536 ECD centers will be registered, thus enabling these centers to access funding and support from government and other social partners. With regards to the effects of the coronavirus to the early childhood development centers, the sector remains closed in the alleged level four risk adjusted approach. However, we will continue to monitor the implementation of the alert levels risk adjusted approach to review this decision in consultation with government and structures. In light of the closure of the ECD centers, we continue to pay subsidies in order for these centers to fulfill their administrative responsibilities and the payment of stipends. In the total budget allocated for this program is 305.5 million on services to persons with disabilities. The department provides services that facilitate the promotion of social well-being and social economic empowerment and skills development of persons with disabilities through the provisioning of the programs and services, as well as capacity building and support. This encompasses a range of intervention and services, including protective workshops, capacity building and support. Critical in this program is the implementation of the community-based rehabilitation services and advocacy, utilizing a rights-based approach that contributes positively to enhancing the mainstreaming of persons with disabilities within their communities. The total budget allocated for this program is 33.6 million. On our services to older persons, honorable chair of chairs, the department is prioritizing a shift from residential care facilities towards the community-based care and support services as part of the transportation agenda outlined in the social sector priorities. In providing care and support services to other persons, more emphasis will be paid to protection against all forms of abuse, support for improved social well-being through information, education, counseling services intergenerational programs and active aging programs. All the person facilities remain closed during the alert level four due to their vulnerability to COVID-19. And we encourage all facilities to ensure the implementation of COVID-19 protocols and work with health teams for the continuous screening and testing. The total budget allocated for this program is 88.3 million. On our HIV and AIDS program, uh, Honorable Chair of Chairs, the department is mandated uh, to coordinate programs that respond to social and structural drivers of HIV, STI, and TB, and link these efforts to the National Development Plan. The department, as part of a multi-sectoral approach, will have a special focus on the needs of adolescent girls and young women. We will also expand implementation of social behavioral change, targeting 22,739 young people aged between 15 to 24 years in all eight districts. The focus will be on mentoring our boys and capacity building of men happening change in all the eight districts. The department will be funding 65 home-based care non-profit organizations to provide care and support those infected and affected by HIV and AIDS. The total budget for this program is 19.5 million. 
On our social relief program, Honorable Charles Chairs, the increasing impact of COVID-19 pandemic on social distress in our communities necessitates an effective response to meet the needs of individuals, families, and communities who are facing undue hardship in this period. Our social relief program will focus on targeting the poorest and most vulnerable who have been affected by this disaster in all districts. The implementation two minutes, of the two, minutes, two minutes left. Program Department of Education and On restorative services, crime and prevention and support as crime remains a serious social challenge facing our country and our province. And the department, the total budget allocated for this program is 18.9 million. In the intensification of fight against gender-based violence and victim empowerment, as the province, we have experienced cases of gender-based violence and femicide, and thus there is a need to strengthen our intervention, focusing on prevention, early intervention, and care and support and services tied to women. The department is leading the government efforts in the fight of the scourge, the department will employ 30 additional social workers focusing on the enhancement of services rendered at Tutuzela centers and the victim support centers in addition to all our intervention. In working on addressing gender-based violence and femicide within institutions of higher learning, a provincial campaign will be implemented targeting eight higher education campuses in, all, in eight of our districts the department will integrate survivors of gender-based violence into the LGBTQI plus community into existing shelters in order to confront discrimination, prejudice, and violence. The total budget for this program is 38.9 on substance abuse and prevention and rehabilitation. In collaboration with the MPO sector, the department will provide inpatient and outpatient treatment programs the community of the Eastern Cape and the total budget allocated for the program is 11.4 million on community development, poverty alleviation and sustainable livelihood honorable members. In response to the high levels of poverty, hunger and deprivation, certain interventions will be targeted at providing comprehensive social security to vulnerable individuals and poor households. allocated to this program is 21.7 million. We will seek to integrate and mainstream youth development and women development with the budget for youth development being 11 million and for women development uh, being 3.9 million honorable chair of chairs. Um, honorable chair of chairs, the Circle Reproductive Health and Rights Program will be intensified, focusing on the local municipalities of Bizana and Nelson Mandela. This program will be supported through the of Canada. Yeah, to, your, your time is up, and this, can you conclude, please? Thank you, Chair of Chairs. Um, in conclusion, uh, Chair of Chairs, as the Department um, of Social Development, our intervention is a, uh, meant to protect, capacitate, and empower the poor and vulnerable towards their development. This is our guiding framework in the delivery of the developmental social welfare services. Honorable Chair of Chairs, I take the budget for social development 2020-2021 financial year. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable MSC. Honourable members, uh, can we and uh, those who are participating in the meeting, uh, especially the uh, the staff uh, of the MSCs, uh, can you ensure that you mute because you are actually disturbing the speakers on the floor uh, as soon as your mic is unmute, is unmuted, is um, you are disturbing the people that are on the floor. Can we ensure that we keep the decorum of the house? Uh, so that we don't disturb those that are on the program. We are running the business of the legislature, which is very important. And uh, of course, we have people on YouTube listening to us. Uh, let's keep the decorum of the house. Uh, thank you very much. Secretary, can you read the fifth order of the day? 
ukwanza lwa kwe sabe loma lise voti ya sano imi sebe nzika hulmenta honorable eh mati gizela emnesu for public works can you please take the Public Works MSC. Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs, Honorable Premier and members of the Executive Council, Honorable Chairperson and members of the Portfolio Committee on Public Works, Honorable members of the Legislature, distinguished guests in this part of the time adopted an eight-point regulation which focused on rejecting extravagance, reducing the cultural visits, meetings, and empty talk. It is these regulations that influence and guide how we conduct our business as the department. The coronavirus pandemic has also Stated that we do things like an digitalization. Madam Speaker, the electoral mandate of the sixth ANC led administration is unambiguous about the need of the support of the agenda. Yes, Chair. Okay, can you raise your voice, please? Can I? Can you raise your voice so that uh, other members can hear? Thank you very much. Madam Speaker, uh, Honorable Chair of Chairs, the electoral mandate of the sixth led administration is unambiguous about the need to accelerate the provision of infrastructure in support of the transformation agenda to build an inclusive economy. For the 2020-2021 financial year, the demand has been allocated a total of two Six billion as part of building an ideal public nerve center for infrastructure delivery. We have concluded the development of the organizational structure, which is a technically capable institution. The architecture of our structure will enable the department to fulfill, amongst the other things, the transversal function of the coordinating infrastructure plan delivery in the province. Honorable Chair of Chairs, I wish to reaffirm the pronouncement by the Premier during the State of the Province Address that the establishment of provincial infrastructure monies will be fully conditional by the beginning of June 20, budgeted at 41,500,000. The establishment of the company and the process the internal capacity beginning to yield the positive. The PMO will hand hold the 51 internally developed professionals to plan, design, and deliver high value projects within scope and budget. A further 20 million will be invested towards the Dogmatolisima Jogosi Basari Fund. Honorable members, we committed to leave no stone unturned in the transformation in transforming the property sector. To this end, in the current financial year, we will be hosting the Eastern Cape Government Property Development and Investment Conference, which will serve as a catalyst for attracting investment to the province. Honorable members, the case against government relating to Amadou Dolasan Hotel has been and government has taken ownership we are finalizing a revenue plan to utilize the property for revenue generation in line with the priorities of the current administration. The department has issued a request for proposal to develop 32 eight owned properties, which include vacant land sites that carry potential for economic opportunities for revenue enhancement. Who former president was a Haiti and who artist emphatically coins our principal task better when he says the world is like a 
percent live or eighty percent survive under mouth cannot be to move you from under the table or vice versa. Our task is to move the to change its position if necessary and, and all to sit around the table. Honorables, the provincial government last financial year spent approximately 286 million on leases for office accommodation. The majority of these leases are in the hands of white landlords. White landlords only control a total of 74 million. However, in the Eastern Cape, the old leases were valued only at 14 million. This structure in our context speaks that 80% of the five are our voting forces, the African majority. The scenario cannot continue unabated. If it does, the poor and marginalized will have nothing to eat except history. We have advertised a bit in the policies for officer community. Target for landlord are under control, managed, and Eastern Cape based. For 2020 2021, an amount of 30,700,000 has been allocated for the provision of this accommodation. And I must hasten to state, Chair of Chairs, that this state of affairs of a government that is perpetually missing and can be relying on private or all this accommodation cannot be a permanent solution. We will ensure that the operation of is delivered in this term of government. And I can confidently claim necessary measures have been put in place within the prevailing conditions to close the tender on the 15th of June 2020. In the current year, the department will explore and implement build, operate, and transfer financial to deliberately transform the list patterns in the long term positioning government. Honorable Chair of Chairs, we acknowledge that in the past we have been struggling to meet our set target on revenue collection. We have seen measures in place that to yield positive results. These measures include enlisting the services of the state attorney to help with enforcing the conditions of these agreements and illegal occupation. Equally, we have strengthened our internal capacity to manage and maintain our debt. The process has started in areas of Umtata and East London and will be rolled all over the province. <laughs> Ukuba wanke umani oni sifu melo ame so kusede nzisa iza kuiwa zika kulu menge makatla ule. Siza kukuniseki iza ukuba kukuyenze. The department is currently 220 property in its past register. An amount of 539,600,000 has been allocated for payment of rates. And we have also set aside an amount of 116,700,000 for payment of municipal services like water and refuse removal. We have observed that this expenditure increased, this expenditure increased yearly. This year, we shall implement a revenue retention plan to reduce such costs and reinvest the money on other urgent issues. Honorable members, we acknowledge the challenges we have encountered with respect to the maintenance of state-owned building. As part of igniting the sense of agency of the department, we have started putting together an overall of facilities money program, which will fast track our response. To this end, the department allocated an amount of 123 million for specific maintenance. An amount of 97 million is set aside for new works. For the 9 million, we will go to of office cluster, while 80 million is allocated for the construction of Sarah. 
but it was I am pleased to make that these projects, the department will be allocated for the completion of the multi project in the previous year. The amount of 168 million 800,000 for providing the required security services. Chair of Chairs, the department will implement infrastructure projects on behalf of client departments at an amount of 521 million with education in the members that mandated to lead coordination of support of infrastructure and construction SMEs. Accordingly, the department the department will be the epicenter of ensuring 30% penetration by local SMEs. And this will also ensure viable and sustainable SMEs, thereby contributing immensely on job needs. Spend no effort in ensuring that invoices are paid within 30 days. I must indicate that we have concluded the process of setting 160 contractors to be in the ICTP database. 60% of which are young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The selected contractors will yeah. be provided. Yeah, yeah, COVID. By <laughs> we are proud, we are honorable chair of chairs. We are proud to report to this house uh, that we are steadfast in implementing and ensuring local SME penetration. This has been specifically evident in the recent mandate the department has been given to refurbish health facilities to respond to COVID-19. To date, 32 awards amounting to 50 million, 900,000 have been made to 100% is NK-based contractors. Worth mentioning also is that 12 awards to the value of 30 million, 300,000 were made to women contractors, while six awards to the value of 11 million, 600,000 were made to youth contractors. The Communist Party of China's eight-point regulation instructs us that leaders must keep in close contact with the grassroots. In-depth inspection, that greater attention be focused on places where social problems are more acute. Leaders, leaders should work and listen to the public and the people's practical problems must be tackled, I close quote. We have taken a conscious decision to strengthen our system to monitor the implementation of infrastructure through an early detention mechanism we have named for the seller campaign. Projects will be delivered <coughs> in time with the Honorable Chair of Chair, the focus of public works is on creating sustainable jobs for our people. For the 2020-2021 financial year, the department commits to create approximately 1,750 work opportunities through the implementation of flagships program. That is, 6 million has been allocated for this purpose. Honorable Speaker, this house will recall that I adopted Sarah by piloting the MTM plan in consultation with the respective municipalities. We have identified and agreed on critical areas of collaboration. In Sarah Batman, we will be establishing business development and training the either. In Alfred, we will be a comprehensive technical tool in this zone. I wish to state that all these, pro all these projects and the programs outlined above will be implemented within the spirit of the district model. Working with, the, with, working with the structures, we have made significant progress in improving and strengthening our control and being to this is the implementation of consequence management in zero tolerance against fraud and corruption. However, uh, honorable members, our journey towards realizing our mandate as the NERV Center for Infrastructure in this we will continue to find a resonance with Karl Marx in a letter to his father, who is step of the 
real movement is more important than the programs. I now take the policy and budget as strategic plan for your approval. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, um, Honorable MSC. Uh, Honorable members, as we, as MSCs are presenting policy speech, as MSCs are presenting policy speeches, uh, they get emailed to us. Uh, as you know, that in the House, you would normally get uh, uh, them distributed. And that is also taking place currently because they get, if you open your emails, you will see that each MSC has takes the floor and the policy speeches get email. Thank you very much. Uh, Secretary, can we go to the sixth order of the day? Um, MSC Gangro. Secretary. Kwanza alwa kwe sabe lo malise kuhuti ye standa atu eze mfumundo. Okay. Thank you very much. MSC Gade, uh, education, can you take the floor? Uh, thank you, Honorable, Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs, um, Honorable Premier, Honorable Speaker, members of the Executive Council, members of the House, uh, DG, all HODs and senior management of the Department of Education, uh, the people of the Eastern Cape, educators and learners, SGPs, the Advisory Council of Education in the Eastern Cape, I greet you in this afternoon. Honorable Chair of Chairs, in the recent weeks following the lockdown, our resolve, our resourcefulness as the basic education sector has been tested like never before. The loss of teaching and assessment time has a significant negative effect on the curriculum coverage, where to immediately develop a support interventions and the recovery programs to ensure that the essential components of the curriculum that we have, that we have has been covered and as, as we prepare ourselves for the reopening of the schools. Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs, also the department immediately developed and implemented a catch-up program and significantly scaled up efforts towards the promotion of learning and teaching at home, the department adopted an anywhere, anytime learning approach, which is possible and achievable due to advancements in digital technology education. The curriculum support and recovery plan utilizes a variety of digital tools and the platforms to develop and avail, and avail learning resources during the lockdown, and the work is ongoing to support learners and teachers. The four pillars driving the curriculum support and the recovery implementation plan are teaching solutions, learning support, communication, and resourcing. Deputy Chair of Chairs, there is a risk, the real risk of regression for children whose basic fa foundational learning, reading, maths, and languages, if they were not strong enough to begin with. Our immediate response to the closure of schools was premised on ensuring that our learners continue to read and write daily so as to so as to as not to lose the important learning gains made in the first term of the schooling year honorable deputy chair of chairs on the improving of the foundational skills of, on literacy and numeracy the department has developed a draft reading plan for 2019-2023 based on the national sector plan and, ta and tailored to the needs and realities of the Eastern Cape province. I am particularly excited, Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs, that the Eastern Cape Department of Education's reading plan includes the prov provisioning, provisioning of readers for all young children from grade R to grade 3 to take home and read with their families in their home language first and foremost, and in additional languages. I urge all citizens of the Eastern Cape province to support the reading plan. Uh, it is quite a bit clearer, and, and they have got their own important role to play. 
on the early childhood development on honorable deputy chair of chairs we plan to ensure access to great art in all primary schools and improve the quality of teaching and learning in this important grade to achieve this the department is continued to is committed to continue investment in the training and development of great art educators the department will convene a provincial summit on ECD with all departments and stakeholders involved in the ECD ecosystem to articulate the kind of ECD system that we would wish to see in the next coming 10 years. Our aim is to ensure that we provide all children with access to quality, holistic ECD so that every child reaches their full potential. This is done, Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs, as a direct response to the ECD integ integration uh, from the Department of Social Development to the Department of Education as that process of transition has to be finalized by next year. On infrastructure, uh, Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs, we are reprioritizing resources towards the purchasing of water tanks to all identified schools, liaising with municipalities to ensure safe and reliable water supply, provisioning of sanitation packages to identified schools, and providing uh, additional mobile classes so as to meet the requirements for the social distance in our schools as required by the COVID-19 regulation. In the medium term, uh, uh, Deputy Chair of Chairs, addressing our school infrastructure backlogs, especially for, for a special focus area on prioritizing the provisioning of school hostels in the face of severe fiscal constraints, will require innovative approaches such as public-private partnership that can be a leverage for a solution. In this year, we shall engage all partners in exploring options for resourcing and supporting our hostel program and infrastructure rollout. On the rationalization of schools, uh, Deputy Chair of Chairs, we have developed a detailed plan for the rationalization of schools in the province. The aim of the rationalization process is to improve opportunities for learners by placing them in schools that are equipped to provide quality education. This policy priority will be carefully assessed in line with the trends and patterns emerging from the pandemic. On the e-learning, on the e-learning and uh, empty chair of chairs, we as, we as the department will implement programs that will increase the number of learners who benefit from virtual classes, whilst also enabling them to access all other education-related portals through the provisioning of zero-rated SIM cards. This will be made available for as long as the pandemic, pand pandemic lasts more specifically. We will provide data SIM cards for the learners of the Eastern Cape and inter an inter an interactive remote teaching will be distributed to the learners of the Eastern Cape and efficient learning flexibility and repeat lessons will be provided an all-in-one broadcasting system with live video streaming, hardware and software solutions that will enable an unlimited capture, live production, ETC, will be made available. We'll have the ability to broadcast classes to designated centers in any location across the province. We'll record lessons, edit and restream at a convenient time and link to the department's website and virtual library of the department. On the implementation of curriculum with skills and competence for the changing world, Deputy Chair of Chairs, the department will drive an implementation of curriculum with skills and competence for the changing world in partnership with the Department of Science and Technology and the Department of Basic Education. The province will officially open a new high-tech science center in Kofimvaba this year, focusing on teaching of mathematics and science. The science center will serve as a global learning and observation to benefit the environment globally as a part of the program of the department. 
This is a worldwide hands-on primary and secondary schools-based science and education program focusing on the environment. On National Schools Nutrition Program, a deputy chair of chairs, the, we will, the provisioning of a nutritious meal to all learners in Quindal 1 to 3 and targeted special schools is a critical component of our state social security net for our communities and ensure improved access and retention of learners in schools. As you would understand that in the majority of time, the learner dropout is not as a result of their own capacity, but sometimes because of the nutrition that they don't get in the respective vulnerable families that our own kids come from. Hence, we target critical one to three as the most vulnerable kids from vulnerable uh, families and households. On the inclusive education, honorable deputy chair of chairs, our education, training, and innovation system should cater for different needs and accommodate all learners to pro produce highly skilled individuals. In this context, sensitization of the public and advocacy on the expansion of four new special schools for learners on the autism spectrum disorder is important. The following schools are identified as designated for autism as we have marshaled them in the past uh, quarter, Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs. It's in Buffalo City, in Buffalo City Metro, it's Zuelicha, at Zuelicha, at Nomvume School, in Nelson Mandela Metro, at Zide, is Temba Labantu School, at OR Tambo Coastal, in Port St. John's in particular, it is Manzabila School, in OR Tambo Inland, it in Kandul in particular, is Mashubanzi School. Those are the four identified schools for autism in the province as a direct response to the SOPA presentation by our own uh, premier during the last term. We, re we are responding to that SOPA now so as to find a better way of ensuring that the populace of the province does not live outside of the interest of development as enshrined in the National Development Plan of the country. The schools are currently undergoing technical assessment for costing for the required renovations, refurbishment, and resourcing for conversion into autism of schools. But Manza Abila is, is, is complete. There is no question about it. In particular, I visited myself, Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs. On the building partnership, on building partnerships, uh, we will work together with the stakeholders to ensure that our schools are safer and productive learning environments. And the plans of the department have been to enrich and to detail and frank contributions received from our social partners, teachers, parents, and broader Eastern Cape education community. We will continue to enhance partnership with universities to ensure that the research potential of the universities benefit the department and is optimally utilized. On the language policy and planning, uh, Deputy Chair of Chairs, the language transformation is a priority, and we acknowledge that while language is not everything in education, without language, everything is nothing in education equal. Notwithstanding the challenges posed by COVID-19, the department commits to, project, to the project declared by myself as the MEC of Education and as well the Premier of the province in the beginning of the year of providing an African mm -hmm. language mm -hmm. class of grade 12 with an opportunity of bilingual examinations in some learning areas. In conclusion, uh, 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 Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs, let me take this opportunity to emphasize that education is the bridge of hope for our children and nation at large let me reiterate that education is a societal matter that needs all of us to, to be dedicated, always be committed and vigilant. I now present the budget uh, of the Department of Education, Deputy Chair of Chair, of 37.768 billion rands, which has been uh, uh, classified as follows. For administration is 3 billion rands. 
for public uh, ordinary school education is 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 thirty comma seven nine four billion rands for independent school subsidy is one for one point seven million for public special schools education is nine five six point six million for early childhood childhood development is five seven two point seven million for infrastructure development is one point five four four billion and lastly for examinations education related services we are putting before the house five five four nine point two million rents thank you deputy chair of chairs and members thank you very much uh, honorable uh, mc um, can the secretary read the seventh order of the day Kwanjalwa kwesabe lo malise vuti ese kwenye ukulumendo lo bambi swano ne mitumbi mfili. Thank you very much, Honourable. Uh, Nata, can you take the floor? Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Chair of Chairs. Uh, greetings to you and honourable members, distinguished guests. Uh, protocol observed. I now proceed straight uh, to page five, Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs. That the department operates in a dynamic uh, environment with both internal and external factors that unfortunately have a direct effect on our operations. Be that as it may, we are up to the challenge of the department considering our competent management and staff. Deputy Chair of Chairs, last year, I stood before the House to present our, deliver our deliverables as a department. And I find it appropriate at this point to give a brief account of what the department managed to deliver uh, over this period. We have reviewed a service delivery model considering decentralization to improve efficiencies and better experiences of communities. The review also took into account the new district development model introduced by the president aimed at shaping our department to effectively and efficiently support local economic development, growth and basic service delivery. We have conducted coaching programs for SMS members with the National School of Government in partnership with the European Union. The need to enhance employer-employee relations in our department is of paramount importance, hence we strengthened our capacity of the management labor forum to improve labor relations. To improve community participation development, the department reviewed the integrated service delivery model in the ISDM. The focus is on functionality of white based planning and participation of communities in service delivery. As we move closer to 2021 local government elections, the department introduced a rapid petition management process, moving from the quarterly to monthly monitoring of petitions. The Prof joints and priority communities are now monitoring and updating service delivery petitions on a monthly basis. All 39 municipalities were supported by the department to develop community engagement plans to avert violent service delivery protests. To promote good governance in local government, the separation of powers doctrine project known as governance model remains at a developmental and pilot phase in OR Tambo district and Buffalo City Metro. This governance model does hold the executive accountable, but increases salary bill as more staff, as more full-time councils and additional staff are needed to implement this model. On MIG performance, a total allocation of 2.9 billion for 2018-19, 2.8 billion was spent of that amount, which is 93% on the following projects, which is high mask lights, roads, water, and sanitation and building of community walls, sports facilities, and land fill sites. The National Cocta and the department is working together with the SARS through our MOU to eliminate illegitimate indigent beneficiaries 
in the municipal indigenous registers. The department held the drought water summit in December in Sarabatman district municipal to avoid day zero and promote engineering water businesses for sustainable future. The department allocated funding for the drilling and equipping of boreholes in Makana, Sandes River, Dr. Beas Nodi, and the construction of water treatment plant at the local municipality. The department created 47,557 work opportunities through uh, public employment programs, CWP and EPWP, to reduce levels of unemployment in line with the vision 2030 uh, NDP. However, the allegations of corruptions in the CWP led uh, the minister uh, to institute investigation into this program. These two programs assisted the municipalities to eradicate uh, 402 illegal dumping sites across the province and the maintenance of 385 community walls and creatures clinics and uh, ECDC schools through painting, installing of tiles, fixing leaking water pipes, and working with Dr. Da on drought projects. Supported the beautification of five small towns that include Lusigisigi, PSJ, Libode, uh, Raymond Mthaba, Kegut, and through cleaning and uh, stormwater cleaning uh, uh, pro uh, uh, program. To increase the participation of traditional leaders in rural and community development programs, the department developed policy guidelines to give effect to this. In minimizing the claims and disputes, the department has conducted genealogical research of six royal families for senior traditional leaders. And to improve the functional traditional leadership institution during 1920, 163 newly recognized traditional leaders were inducted. Deputy Chair of Chairs, as we progress with the implementation of the six-term administration agenda, the department commits to perform the following tasks. In putting people first, the department has acknowledged that Integrated service delivery model is a useful tool to enhance public participation and rapid response to community needs. The department commits to foster citizens' participation by creating ward committees, community outreach programs, and public dialogues with communities and the creation of functional ward war rooms. The department will ensure the maximum participation of traditional leaders, civil society, and community-based organizations academics and the private sector in these institutional platforms. The department will implement the legal reference guide on public protest, the legal strategy against unlawful actions or strategies, and municipal complaints, norms and standards framework, and rapid response petition framework to minimize the disruptions before and during local government elections. The department will support municipalities in the establishment of system structure to implement SPLUMA through training of municipal planning tribunal members, appeals authority structures, and uh, authorized officials and assisting municipalities in the process of reviewing the spatial development framework and developing their land use management schemes in order uh, to be SPLUMA compliant. In some areas in OR Tambo district, participation of traditional leaders is improving and will build on these positive outcomes to ensure full participation in all our districts. To improve IDPs in the province, the department will support development of eight DDM plans for the six districts and two metros. And support will also be provided in the alignment of IDPs with the new district development model and through district profiling to establish the level of technical capacity. The department will intensify the integration between traditional leaders, democratically elected structures and rural communities in the area of IDP and other service delivery programs, such as the formulation of development plans. The department will use the municipal support intervention framework to diagnose and categorize all municipalities in line with back to basic framework for the differentiated support and intervention. In line with the existing memorandum of understanding with the DPSA, the department will facilitate the integration of the PMU and DDM 
and through the existing MOU that we have with Forte University, the department will explore the institutional support to our Tambo District uh, TTM. The department will be assisting municipalities in processing all land development applications in terms of the land use management schemes. The department will prioritize municipalities in various districts to conduct cadastral survey for access to land rights and deputy chair of chairs in strengthening governance and administration in, in traditional leadership institutions. The department will continue to facilitate advocates campaigns on the new traditional and cohesion leadership act of 2019. And furthermore, the Eastern Cape Customer Made Initiation Practice Act will also be subjected to review for the purposes of addressing the challenges and weaknesses that have been identified during the implementation of the principal act. The review process will be influenced by subcultural dynamics prevailing in the Eastern Cape province to ensure stabi stability during the impl implementation. We are aware that the implementation of the traditional and cohesion leadership act will require major budget allocation. The regional leadership institution will facilitate partnerships with government and non-governmental institutions to, to improve service delivery in traditional communities. Delivering basic services, deputy chair of chairs, the department has developed the provincial municipal infrastructure and service delivery uh, system, reporting system, that will monitor municipal capital grants performance on a quarterly basis. To support delivery of municipal infrastructure, the department is introducing a web-based local government management information system. This system will enhance and inform the department's strategies and mechanism in supporting and intervening in trouble with municipalities. To enhance efficiencies of basic infrastructure delivery, the department has introduced the provincial municipal infrastructure coordinating guidelines. The system will also help the department to support and monitor make projects such as water projects, sanitation roads, community or sport fields, landfill sites, and street lights. The goal is to detect early poor performance on infrastructure projects and service delivery backlog. The province is allocated uh, 3 billion for 2021 20, make infrastructure projects and 36 municipalities will benefit from this allocation. The South African Free Basic Services Framework and the National Guidelines makes provision for indigent support for poor households. However, to remove illegitimate beneficiaries in municipal indigent registers, COCTA will support data cleansing project in all our 39 municipalities. On the local economic development, FNB incubation program is currently incubating 21 entrepreneurs in Joe Gabi in collaboration with COCTA. These incubation programs are on financial management, cash flow management, and business management. And FNP is running this incubation program on small businesses and cooperatives over a period of six months. And the next district to benefit in this program is Chris Zani, which will start in the new financial year 2021. Deputy Chair of Chairs, over the next three years, 800 local SMEs have been targeted in the FNP incubation program and 20 projects have been identified to drive economic development in local municipalities uh, that include uh, Amashati, Inokimkijima, Kokama, Zambe, Nushwa, Mizana, Port St. John's, and Raymond Shaba local municipalities are being packaged for possible investments. Youth and women are being prioritized in this incubation program. And the department in 20, 2021 will conduct a technical site verification tech training for de 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 departmental CDWUs to intensify site verification on all make and other sector grants. This will broaden the number of sites to be visited on a quarterly basis and to inculcate a culture of accountability by municipalities and to ensure that there is value for money in all make funded projects. Ladies and gentlemen, the partnership between the seven municipalities and the Federation of Canadian Municipalities to support and drive economic development is taking shape. The program is aimed at providing additional capacity to municipalities on LED, GIS system and asset management. And in KSD municipal, the partnership is seeking to explore the utilization of waste 
to drive a biofuel program similar to what is being done by the city of Sarain in Canada. Partnership with retailers such as PA have been brokered in support of entrepreneurs to sell their products through uh, the fast-moving consumer goods program. These products include fruit, veggies, bread, toilet paper, garlic, and so forth. The program provides SME easier access with less barriers to entry to make their products available on shelves and at eye level. This is being done in collaboration with the local development agencies, municipalities, and ESRTA. My department, in collaboration with national COCTA and municipalities, will maintain CWP Employment Safety Net for 47,184 participants across the province, as well as empower 1,500 participants through training for better labor market opportunities in line with the National Development Plan, which advocates for the reduction of triple challenges of unemployment, inequality, and poverty. Furthermore, the department will utilize CWP participants to provide labor-intensive in inputs for minor infrastructure maintenance, which include portals, repairs, general cleaning, clearing of illegal dam sites, road markings, and blocking of stormwater drainage in the small towns. The Provincial Disaster Man Management Center will facilitate and monitor the implementation of drought mitigation measures, such as drilling and equipping of poles in Sarah Patman District Municipality. And key to the disaster mitigation measures is a system that we have installed in the department to detect and respond to disaster in the province. COCTA is establishing a drought war room with the Department of Water and Sanitation to assist Honorable municipalities Honorable affected Honorable by drought. Honorable Lemsi, your time is up. Can you conclude? On good governance, an executive, as an executive authority, I've envisaged to effect changes that will promote good governance in the department. We are working on a renewal program to ensure that COCTA is an agile institution that is capable of dealing with the challenges that are facing municipalities and traditional institutions. And together with COCTA team, I am focusing on building professionalism and the ability of COCTA to move with speed on issues that affect good governance. The department will continue to ensure that there is proper governance in respect of municipal councils and all municipal councils will be monitored as to whether they are in compliance with the relevant legislation. And illegal decisions taken by municipal councils will have consequence management implemented and holding councillors personal liable. The department commits to support municipalities to enforce their municipal bylaws and the department will advocate. Can you table this, please? Can you conclude? Oh, okay. Uh, in conclusion, Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs, the department will maintain the support to municipalities and traditional leadership institutions. Uh, I say this because developmental local government requires all spheres of government to join forces in an integrated manner to deal with the constant triple challenges experienced by municipalities. Honorable Chair of Chairs, I hereby table uh, the policy speech, the strategic plan, the annual performance plan, uh, 2020 2021 for the for the department of cooperative governance and traditional affairs and thank you thank you very much honorable mc uh, can the secretary move to the eighth order of the day um, <laughs> Uh, Honorable MC Matt, Dr. Da, can you take the floor? Honorable Chair, sorry to interrupt. Uh, we are, uh, unfortunately haven't got translation facilities, so it is very difficult to, to follow the uh, the announcements of the of the order of the day. Thank you. Uh, no, noted, Honorable Gutierrez. We will look into that. Uh, Honorable uh, MC Meth, can you take the floor? Honorable Speaker and Deputy Speaker, Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs, Honorable Premier, 
members of the executive council, honorable members of the provincial legislature, the chairperson of the house of traditional leaders and all traditional leaders. I'm a farmer. Abe Mibe Pondo, Lagulo Tatu Raymond Mslaba, inaugural premier of the Eastern Cape, Abasma Mele Bukaga Taga, Male Misla, Nagono Matoto Lobokslala. Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs, the goals of the NDP Vision 2030 are to eliminate poverty and reduce inequality by 2030. The Eastern Cape has developed the Provincial Development Plan which seeks to build an innovative, inclusive, and growing economy with an enabling infrastructure network. The plan places priority in the development of high-value agriculture as the bedrock for the development of the rural sector and promotion of rural livelihoods. The PDP represents both our aspiration as well as our commitment to attainment of objectives of the NDP. As the sixth administration, we rededicate ourselves to push back the frontiers of poverty and deprivation and reinvigorate our pursuit of the ideal of prosperous society in our lifetime. While we will present this guide to the work we will be doing in the coming financial year, we wish to extract the words of Jawaharlal Nehru, the first prime minister of India, who said, open quote, everything can wait but not have to a close quote. As adopted by the Department of that Development and Agrarian Reform, these words provide a perfect response to President Cyril Ramaphosa's vision and call to transform Eastern Cape to be South Africa's food basket through an agricultural revolution. With, I quote, 2020 to 2024 as the era of job creation and social economic development, close quote. As a contribution to this clarion call, Dr. Da will coordinate all his stakeholders under the theme everything can wait, but not agriculture. Together, commercializing agriculture and creating wealth, Lili Malabanti. As we enter the last decade of the NDP, we must double our efforts to accelerate our implementation of the Provincial Development Plan initiatives. As we accelerate the implementation of our programs, we will review and change our delivery methodology and operating model. We will reconfigure the operating model of the department and its agencies to support the different tiers of our farming communities. That will bring greater accountability for organizational performance with greater emphasis on return on investment in both social and economic outcomes. Honorable members, I agree with the observations of the Presidential Advisory Panel on Land Reform and Agriculture that, quote, currently within the land redistribution program, the poor and marginalized have not been given sufficient opportunities to have access to land and only the elite and those who have means, close quote. It is therefore critical for the state to prioritize the most marginalized and the poor, especially smallholder producers, women and youth, including agricultural graduates. The president has further emphasized that, I quote, a new beneficial selection policy includes compulsory training for potential beneficiaries before land can be allocated to them, close quote. Furthermore, a total of 700 hectares has been set aside for disposal in accordance with the new selection policy. Of this, more than 77,000 hectares constituted by 168 farms in the Eastern Cape are currently under assessment for distribution. The department will work with the Department of Public Works to identify provincial state farms assess agricultural potential with a view to allocate to aspire, aspiring young farmers. We must package the land parcel into investment portfolios that could attract private capital and make our land productive, feed society, and create jobs for our youth. This is the future we want for our province. This is the contribution we want from our agriculture sector. We will continue to drive our agro-processing strategy through a mixed model of infrastructure-led investment strategy. Such agro-processing plants will serve as demand aggregators to promote primary production, thus driving the whole ecosystem to stay. We will review the operating model of the Red Hubs to focus on commercialization and driving scale economies. For this financial year, we have set aside 11 million for the rehabilitation of the Red Hubs infrastructure, a project that will be conducted together with the review and repositioning of the Red Hub's commercial models on cannabis industry to ensure participation of small producers as potential outgrowers 
working with major aggregators, we will in this financial year set aside, or we have set aside 4.5 million for providing seed, fencing and training to permit holders who will strengthen technical support to improve production yields. Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs, our agribusiness entrepreneurs are faced with challenges which sometimes go beyond the issue of funding. To address these challenges, an investment promotion and advisory support function will be set up as an independent business support unit to facilitate and to broker commercial viable partnerships to drive transformation of the sector. This financial year will play a catalytic and strategic role by facilitating the development of full meat industry value chain, focusing on attracting private capital into various parts of the meat industry value chain. The department is initiating an agricultural yellow fleet to address the state of farm access roads and dam scooping in a cost-effective manner through the use of existing government yellow fleet contract. In 2021 financial year, the department has set aside 60 million to drill and equip 62 boreholes, revitalize 186 dams, and maintain farm access roads. Consequent to the pronouncement made for the last, from the last year, a funding of 18 million has been received by ESRDA in December 2019 to establish a new mechanization center in Elundin local municipality and to refurbish the small mechanization centers in the red hubs of Mkanduli, Bizana, Noha, and Emalafini. We will, this financial year, assist by putting aside 8.1 million to complete both the new center of Elundini and mechanization centers in the Red Hubs. The generation of new farmers through targeted support youth will make sure that we strengthen our case on the new generation of farmers. For the 2021 financial year, a total of 10 million has been set aside to acquire breeding cattle that will be distributed to young farmers' livestock. On the commodity value chain, on red meat, the department will support 15 custom feeding centers by providing feed to the value of 7 million. This intervention will sustain 89 job, job opportunities and benefit more than 700 producers. As a department, we will invest over 60 million in the veterinary services to support our strategy for red meat export markets. Furthermore, the department will invest 83 million for construction and maintenance of livestock handling facilities. On aquaculture development, the department will support small-scale fishers with fishing equipment with a budget of one million. The ECRTA will continue to support the growth of aquaculture as a strategic commodity for good nutrition in rural communities and business opportunities. The partial cluster of estuaries will be one of the sites identified. A feasibility study and industry business plan and also architectural designs, environmental impact assessment will be conducted. And this will be an incubator that will be implemented in phase in process to increase access to this commodity. The initiative is budgeted 5.7 million. Honorable Deputy Director, the department will continue to prioritize and bias towards partnership to accelerate primary production on grain production with a budget of 87 million to support smallholder and communal producers to plant 20,000 20, hectares. Furthermore, the department will strengthen the cropping program by erecting 400 kilometers of fencing at a cost of 22 million. The targeted areas for this fencing are Oatambo, Atenzo, and Amatole districts. On vegetable value chain, a total of 19.4 million has been set aside to support vegetable producers with irrigation, packing and ablution facilities in Oat Tambo, Dokka, the Amatole, Sarapatman, and Kesan. On citrus value chain, we will support 117 hectares of new citrus orchards in the Sundays River Valley with a budget of 4 million. And this project will result in creation of 152 new jobs. In 2021 financial year on pineapple value chain, the department will support farmers and workers to increase production from 176 hectares to 416 hectares at a cost of 7 million. The pineapple enterprise has the potential to improve employment opportunities. And for this project, jobs will increase from 152 to 433. On deciduous value chain, the department initiated the planning of the deciduous fruit orchard wherein we are at design stage with them, designs, EIA, and detailed soil service, which were started in the last financial year. 
they will be completed in 2021 financial year at a cost of 5.3 million, which is the same amount that was allocated last year. On Macadamia Nuts, this financial year, the department will facilitate investment for the initiation of macadamia production in Amato, Letandela, Oap Tambo, Port St. John's, and Rusikisiki, and Alfenzo in Bizana. On wool and more hair value chain, wool producers will be supported with 33.7 million for construction of 37 fully equipped multi purpose sheds, two small stock mobile handling facilities, three small stock dipping facilities, fencing and 36.9 kilometer camps, eight stock water systems in Chris and Joe Club in Oatamo districts. For genetic improvement, 3 million is allocated to support farmers with 250 rams as breeding stock. And fodder production, the department will support farmers to increase fodder production from 1,473 hectares to 2,600 hectares in Amato, Lekrisani, and Sar Apartment district municipalities with an allocated amount of 10 million. This financial year, the department has set aside 7.2 million for poultry and pickery to support with infrastructure and production inputs in all districts. The department has set aside 5.4 million for this financial year to drive the veterinary school initiative at Forte University. To address the plight of the very small enterprises seeking funding for their projects, this FDA loan financing program will be revamped with a focus of increasing sustainable lending while protecting their loan book against impairment. This financial year, we will, in partnership with this FDA, engage commercial banks and financiers to create a fund that will support agri entrepreneurs at an affordable interest rate. On irrigation agriculture, Department will invest 7.4 million to install irrigation equipment in Lambasi, Lusigisigi, Mantusini, and Bottom Johns. Over and above this, the department will continue with its social facilitation work to resolve conflicts and disputes at Moha, Kamata, and Chefu in order to bring them back to production. On the fertilization of the two minutes left, Honorable MC. Total of 473 students were enrolled at Fort Cox and Tardy. They have graduated. Five million has been set aside. On household support for food security and nutrition, we are saying we are targeting 20,000 indigenous households and local clinics for production, and we've set aside 19 million. And this financial year will make sure that to improve in terms of extension and advisory services. Again, on road development, there is 4.34 million that we have set aside to make sure that there is water access in the deep rural areas of our province. Makomatola, tier states have been allocated for 7 million for this financial year. And we'll also make sure that we are improving the forest development. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs, we'll strive to achieve green administration and good governance and promote ethical leadership. Honorable Deputy Chair, Allow me to take with the five-year strategic plan for 2020-2025 year, 2025 financial years, policy and budget for vote eight, and the annual performance plan for 2020-2021 financial year for Dr. Da and ECRDA. Let the work to build our farmers to be creators of wealth and our rural areas to be reservoirs of productivity continue. Diabulela, Deputy Chair of Chairs. Thank you very much. Uh... Honorable MC, um, can we then move to the ninth order of the day, uh, Secretary? Ukwanda alwa kwe sabe lo mali se voti yesi toba. Upushi solo kokosho imi timbi, yoko singongileyo, no can get dead, dead it. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Honorable um, MSM Vogo, MSC for Economic Development, Environmental Affairs and Tourism. Honorable uh, uh, Deputy Chair of Chairs, Honorable uh, Speaker. Honorable Premier, members of the Executive Council, members of the provincial legislature, uh, heads of department, um, ladies and gentlemen. Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs, who would have thought that when the Honorable Premier 
in his State of the Province address, boldly declaring that 2020 to 2024 would be the era of job creation and social economic development. Shortly after the entire world uh, would be faced with a global health pandemic, the likes of which this generation has never experienced anything similar. When we first crafted our plans for the 2020 medium term strategic framework, we had never anticipated the health and social economic crisis that we are facing right now. And so it has necessitated that we rethink our approach in making the best use of the resources at our disposal to be able to have the highest impact in supporting our economic and, uh, our economy and citizens of our province. Through this crisis, we have been active in our economic tourism and business works to, in engaging with approximately 2,000 to 2,510 case companies who report weekly on various aspects of business operations, including revenue, supply chain, disruptions, and job, uh, as well as in job impact. It's been indicated that between 10,000 to 20,000 jobs may be lost if the disruption in normal economic activity continues beyond two months. Honorable uh, Deputy Chair of Chairs, with the COVID-19 pandemic and its effects likely to last beyond this financial year, our focus has mandated to drive economic development and environmental sustainability in the Eastern Cape will be on the fight to save jobs in the province through post-lockdown economic recovery, free environmental sustainability. Whilst long-term government growth and sustainability remains our focus of the, of, over the next five years, our focus now is on saving as many jobs as possible. We are doing this for our existing but somehow somewhat repackaged uh, products. Support to the tourism sector. Honorable Speaker, the impact on the tourism sector has been massive, and therefore we need to continue to invest in the sector to, look at, to ensure that the sector survives. We are working with the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure and the Department of Health to make sure to make use of greatest facility for isolation and in quarantine in order to protect jobs and businesses. Supporting the SOMEs, uh, and this, uh, so support SOME is particularly vulnerable during this time, and hence we are implementing various SOME support processes, including linking the SOME to COVID-19 National Relief Fund. We are collaborating with the National Department of Small Business uh, development on the training of uh, the ECDC and mutual of officials, facilitating the flow of actual uh, of factual information as it relates to SMEs, ensuring that all national relief funds find expression locally in the province. Uh, on a positive note, during this pandemic, the production of PPE promises to provide some relief for, to local manufacturers. And the department has been diligently working on increasing the capacity of manufacturers and related services, uh, service companies to supply PPE for the COVID-19 response. Work has been undertaken to link Eastern Cape manufacturers to national transversal uh, procurement processes. Uh, on the job stimulus fund, uh, the job stimulus is its purpose in incentivizing the retention of local of jobs located within the province in key priority sectors, which in turn will promote sustainable job creation. We have 17 million rand available within our current budget to support the retention of jobs to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 uh, on the economy of the Eastern Cape. It is anticipated that the jobs fund policy will be reviewed shortly to allow for a more responsive process for disbursement to COVID-19 distressed companies, including SMMEs. And the Scalo Youth Fund, uh, which is targeting 100% youth owned enterprises uh, uh, in the Eastern Cape, at this time, 25 million rand is made available in the fund, which will be utilized to provide emergency funding to support qualifying youth owned enterprises to mitigate the COVID, the impact of COVID-19 uh, crisis on, on youth enterprises. Uh, on the local and regional economic development fund, we're utilizing 19 million rand allocated to the fund 
promote and administer sustainable uh, economic uh, development and employment creation interventions by supporting uh, Eastern Cape based entities to contribute to, uh, towards economic growth and efforts and to lessen the impact of the pandemic on the economy. On the Eastern Cape Pro Provincial Economic Stimulus Fund, a total of 15 initiatives with a total value of approximately 200 uh, million value allocated funding. Uh, these uh, initiatives cover industrialization support, ICT, agriculture and agro-processing, uh, manufacturing, oceans, economy, uh, tourism, township and rural economies and the film sector. While the structure of the fund is not changed, we will utilize a budget of approximately 260 million to advance infrastructure development and or the creation of an enabling condition to unlock an entire ecosystem of enterprises and or an entire value chain of economic opportunities, thus mitigating the effects of the pandemic. And consumer protection, uh, not only are citizens suffering economic hardship and a lot of job losses caused uh, by the pandemic, but they are also victims of unscrupulous suppliers who seek to benefit from the pandemic. The department will continue to monitor the activity of primary of agriculture, abattoirs, bakeries, and fresh produce, ports, airports, and fuel supplies to detect any threats to essential economic services and food security. Food prices of a basket of groceries is used to detect any unfair price hikes uh, or business practices. Instances of unfair price are investigated by the Office of the Consumer Protection. Uh, on disaster from the private sector, among areas of collaboration between the public sector and the private sector, independent power producers and non-profit organizations in the province have in many cases offered support to the COVID-19 disaster process. A, an IPP NPO digital working group has been established uh, has been established to facilitate close coordination between these sectors and the government disaster response. On auto, non-auto and cooling sector, through the Eastern Cape Automotive Industry Forum, the Eastern Cape Non-Automotive Manufacturing Cluster, and the Eastern Cape Tooling Initiative, the department is partnering with the Tier 1 Automotive Component Sector and the Non-Automotive Manufacturing Sector, like plastic, chemicals, and mills, to improve efficiencies drive supplier and skills development initiatives in addition to driving the localization of tooling imported from outside uh, South Africa by the automotive and non-automotive sectors and initiate skills programs in the tooling sector to enhance capacity in the sector. For the agro-processing sector, the department will continue to support agro-processing initiatives aimed at building local value chains coupled with a transformation agenda for broader participation of previously disadvantaged individuals in the sector. Innovation and diversification within the agro um, is, uh, industry sector will remain as one of the drivers for competitiveness, thus providing for new entrants within the traditional value chain. The department has already established collaborations with our national bodies, such as the Technology Innovation a a Agency, to support innovation in the province. Tourism sector, in order to prevent a total collapse of the sector, will strengthen destination marketing and tourism products to protect niche markets like hunting. Furthermore, we will support trans uh, transport, accommodation, conferencing, and hospitality products to meet COVID-19 industry expectations of hygiene and infection control. Uh, you would unify the sector to the establishment of a shared brand, branding, collateral, brand ethic, and brand behavior will be uh, crucial. Together with the Eastern Cape Parks and Tourism Agency, we will re engineer tourism offerings to focus on the unique features that the province, the province offers in um, the post coronavirus world. The department will support tourism administration administrations at both the district and metro, uh, metro and local municipality level in boosting marketing efforts. And the small business will seek a direct uh, and indirect support to SMEs will continue to form a, a focus on strength and collaboration and integration between national relief instruments and provincial and local government support. 
the numerous support instruments and processes that have already been initiated, initiated as Kalu Youth Fund and Euroad Fund. The training, the second of the training of GD, ECGC and mutual officials in support of the national DSPG uh, relief for the development of a database of SMMEs registered with me in 2024. The provincial SMME fund, the Eastern Cape Provincial Government, we, we are collaborating here with the, the EU Bank, a provincial SMME fund in response of the COVID-19 pandemic and beyond. We are finalizing a memorandum of agreement with both parties' commercial con- contribution of 200 million rand each for a period of two years. Once most details will be announced in due course, the agreement will see you bank financial assistance to qualifying SMEs through direct lending channels for blended finance, uh, for short and long-term low capital, and giving support to government for activities which are deemed to be beneficial to the parties and their common objectives. Uh, uh, informal traders uh, will focus on regulatory compliance through the review of bylaws governing business activities, business licensing, and an enactment of policies by municipalities. Two skills to focus on skills development and capacity building through partnerships with theaters, chief colleges, and other institutions of higher learning. We will focus on providing infrastructure support to decent trading facilities for street traders with ablution facilities or warehouse, uh, warehousing facilities or manufacturing hubs. And four, we'll focus on institutional support in the form of incubation programs or market facilities and organizational support to exhibitions or open uh, trade markets. And lastly, we'll focus on partnership with the ILO, Department of Small um, Business Development, COCTA, CETAS, TVET colleges, and other institutions for, for higher learning. Uh, on ICT sector, well, the national lockdown has forced the fourth industrial revolution into the mainstream, and, and the province has, has, has rightly identified the ICT sector as a, as a strategic for the advancement of industrial and technological de- development for, for, of the province. There are a number of programs currently underway. In one of these, the, pro- the department is engaging with the with investors and funders for lending uh, of an Indian Ocean Exchange subsea cable system, which is called IOX, uh, at the East London IGZ. The IOX submarine cable aims to connect uh, India, Africa, <coughs> Southeast Asia, and Europe to the Indian Ocean Islands, and will provide a high-speed and low-latency network access to enhance businesses um, in these geographies and, and across industries. This will be the province's first international sea cable and will account for an investment of nearly 300 million. On Ocean's Economy, we know that the Premier launched the, the Ocean's Economy on the 6th of March. Uh, uh, th- this is a master plan that provides us with a blueprint, a vision, and implementable plan that will ensure the growth of the economy of, of, of the province. Through this uh, strategic uh, roadmap, uh, we plan to achieve our target uh, of contributing uh, to the value of 10.4 billion to our provincial GDP while creating uh, an estimated uh, more than 20,000 jobs during the first five years of the implementation. The department is well. Uh, uh, to play a strong role in ensuring that the vision and plans that are contained in the master plan are well implemented to the last. On the energy supply, the Eastern Cape has 16 um, wind farms and one solar farm at an estimated value of 33.4 billion. 13 of these facilities have already been constructed, while the remaining four are currently under construction. The commission facilities are already generating over 200 million units of electricity quarter, uh, contrib- contributing on average 30% of the provincial electricity requirement. Under, uh, its, um, under its wind and solar farm support program, the department is working to unlock the opportunities for new wind and solar farms in appropriate areas in the, in the province. Particular focus is placed 
on overcoming the obstacles to renewable energy. Honorable MSC, your time is up. Can you conclude? Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs. Uh, the full impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and the national lockdown are not yet known. And so we we'll continue to engage, gather economic intelligence and implement strategies to offer the best solutions and support to assist our economy through the pandemic and beyond. In doing so, it remains pertinent that we partner and work together coherently to meet the challenges together. I hereby table the strategic plans, annual performance plans uh, for the department and the six public entities for which we are responsible and the service delivery improvement plan for the department. These plans have been impacted by the ch change in priority resulting from our response to the COVID-19 pandemic. But in the interest uh, of cost saving, we have not rendered these plans. Therefore, it's important that these plans are, are read in conjunction with the errata table here within. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Deputy Chair of Chairs. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, And the Secretary of it, the next order of the day. The tabling of vote number 10, the Department of Transport. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable MSC, Transport, Honorable Tikan, can you take to the floor? Uh, Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs, uh, Presiding Officer, the Honorable Premier, Executive Council colleagues, Honorable Members, and Senior Management of the Provincial Government, good afternoon. Today, we are tabling a budget that is aimed at growing Eastern Cape through a safe and reliable transport system. This budget aligns with our plan of ensuring safety on our roads, rebuilding and refurbishing the provincial road network. Honorable De uh, Deputy Chair of Chairs, one of the key priorities for the administration is to build a capable ethical developmental state. We will forge ahead with the capacitation of our expanded public works program beneficiaries through accredited institutions of higher learning. During 2019, we implemented such training programs through ICALA Tibet College. We will further strengthen our artisan development initiative through the Center of Excellence in Craft Rainet. We acknowledge that the rate which, within which we produce new traffic officers is lower than our need for them in the system. This is partly due to the fact that we only have one traffic college in the Eastern Cape. To this end, plans are afoot to establish a provincial traffic college in partnership with the Road Traffic Management Corporation. We have since moved an application for the approval of the accreditation of facilitators through South African Safety and Security CETA. As part of making this plan a reality, the college will cater for the upskilling of our officers as well as training of new entrants. Our broad bursary fund and professional development program work together to address skill strategies, drive economic growth through the transport sector, whilst creating a conducive environment for training and development aid at upskilling youth. A budget of 11 million has been set aside for this exercise. The allocation will ensure that 211 young people gain access to institutions of higher learning to further their studies. In the last couple of years, we have successfully developed pilots, maritime engineering, civil engineers, as transport economists, among others. We also continue with building our internal capacity and upskilling existing traffic law enforcement officers. 30 youth will resume their training to be trained officers in June. The following areas are targeted for development and the existing force, examiners of driving licenses, examiners of motor vehicles, and basic crash accident investigators. We are committed to support the Buy Eastern Cape campaign and the development of small, medium, and micro enterprise over the last year. The development department has spent more than 1.5 billion of its allocation to local SMMEs. Our approach has focused on the following. Procurement of all transactions below the 500,000 investment old threshold were limited to only Eastern Cape based SMEs. 30% subcontracting of all tenders above 30 million to the locally based emerging contractors. First preference is given to contractors who are residing within the local municipal area. 50% of the materials to be procured within the LMA 
district where construction is taking place, skills transfer to local based SMEs is addressing social economic challenges affecting the local municipal areas or district. Such skills transfer isn't limited to the construction industry. Going forward, our procurement strategy will be enhanced towards our all local SMMEs. This will include the introduction of more framework agreements for the supply of construction material, among others. On transport infrastructure, our focus on transportation infrastructure is to develop and implement plans based on the needs of present day Eastern Cape. In so doing, we ought to ensure a balanced province provision of services across the province. During the course of this year, the department will analyze and review the National Transport Master Plan. The aim is to close any gaps in the existing plan approved by the Executive Council in 2010. We are finalizing the road master plan and will, in the second quarter, start the consultation process with all the stakeholders and process it for consideration and approval by EXCO. Honorable members, roads remain one of the country's most critical infrastructure and key enabler to economic development. We therefore understand when communities demand trafficable roads. This year, we'll complete the construction of Bailey Bridges we committed to during 2019-20 financial year in partnership with the South African National Defence Force. We are currently working on the Pilatia Bailey Bridge in Kofimvaba and will commence with construction of Fini Bridge in Tristan, Josana and State Bridge Bridges, both in Joe Kabiti District Municipality. The department continues to press ahead with substantial investment in upgrading of our roads infrastructure. A total budget of 2.3 billion will go towards the upgrading, maintenance, and rehabilitation of roads. As pronounced in this house last year, various roads have been handed over to contractors to perform upgrades from gravel to surface standards. These include 14 kilometers of T125 from N2 to CP2, which cost 296 million and is a work 18 work permit from Department of Labor. The contractor has established site and commenced with the work on the 15-kilometer road project from Willowville to Doesa Nature Reserve, that's phase two, which includes the construction of two bridges. Total cost of the project are set at 280 million. Upgrade from R61 at St. Barnabas Hospital to Tuleka Nature Reserve Phase 1 with a budget of 296 million. The contractor is established on site and commenced with the works on the 16 kilometer road project. In addition to these construction projects, we are pleased to announce that administrative processes have been undertaken to ensure that during 2021 financial year, we commence with tendering process for the following routes Cedarville to Mvenyane, Kandane to Kaimouth. Mlamli Hospital Road, Gladbury Road Project, which constitute 20 kilometers, R61, Makushen to Mzamba, Lowangaka, Mlamli Link Road, 1.5 kilometers. Um, in light of the fiscal challenges we face, we wish to reiterate the people of the province. Our commitment to our roads are trafficable. We will be implementing various recovery projects. But I was to Mamakwe, Tonga, Inyandeni, Ntila in the Alfonso, uh, phase one of the R0815 Umzimvubu and Matadiel in the Alfonso district at an estimated cost of 25 million. In Cook House at Blue Crane, in Obo LM, uh, Tiffendal at Sengu, and uh, Umzimvubu and Matadiel at Alfonso. These projects will be implemented over a period of 8 to 12 months. The total budget for maintenance of our provincial roads is 891 million over the financial year. On receipts and rehabilitation, at the end of 2019, we handed over to the community of Matate local municipality a contractor tasked to receive about 10.3 kilometers at an amount of 93. Million. About 150 million has been invested to receive 30.5 kilometers from Flagstaff to Makuchen in the Alfonso, while in Amatole district, about 190 million has been allocated for the receipt of 31 kilometers better with to Trentano. In our efforts to unlock the tourism corridor of our province, we will this year prioritize the rehabilitation of Vigisville to Coffee Bay Road and as part of bridge program, revitalize the Tsitsa Falls Bridge. The prioritization will extend to the rehabilitation of Inobo, 
to Elliot, which is in a state of collapse and a danger to society. In this regard, we'll continue to engage with potential alternative funding source, such as the budget facility for infrastructure and the presidential investment and infrastructure unit. Projects such as the Wild Coast Meander are earmarked for this type of funding. Designs are ready for the implementation of the Tafalo Fefe to Kandana Road project over the MTF. The, this provides our province with the opportunity to unleash the potential of our coastal belt. It is through this initiative that critical roads such as the Tomo to Staterim Link, the Dibanek Road, and many more are upgraded for the realization of outstanding commitments made. It is an open secret that the public press is unable to fully respond to the needs of the community. Going forward and the partnership with our key stakeholders, we will receive all past studies and evaluate within the prevailing legal framework roads which can be considered for tolling, including during this term of office. This, we believe, has a potential to add some needed funding for maintenance of our roads network. We believe that as a province, we really need to open a dialogue on the tolling concept. In this regard, a preliminary report will be produced before the end of the financial year. Our planned recapitalization program towards the full implementation of 50-50 strategy has taken another step with an investment of 82 million to acquire 32 blind items, including of tow tractors, uh, platform trucks, water trucks and construction motor grades, among others. This move has been bolstered through the appointment of 113 operators across the province. The recapitalization has strengthened our in-house construction unit. Currently, this team is implementing the following upgrade projects from gravel to surface. The Hamburg, Madwaleni, Coffee Bay, Naleni to Kanzibe, Coffee Mvaba to ask it on 52 kilometers with a budget of uh, 219 for the remaining 43 kilometers. Further to this, the department will continue to explore alternative technologies to upgrade our roads during the 2021 financial year. We'll attend to 6.3 kilometers in Kumbu, Mkronto, local municipality, or Tambo, three kilometers from, to, from DR8034 to Clark Baringobo, Chris Ani District. Both roads will be paved. Uh, I wish to confirm to the House and to the people of the province that roads are vital to the building of our economy and improving the quality of life. These roads are used to transport agricultural products and other commodities to markets. During the 2018-19 financial year, we spent over 15 million maintaining roads that were part of the dispute with Agri Eastern Cape. On transport infrastructure, the work done by Sunrun and two upgrading of roads between Nadu and uh, Bogotwane on R67, the, the upgrading of section between Black Kai River and Queenstown on R75, the special maintenance of road between Wolven Fontaine and Jansenville, phase 220 20 kilometers, as well as special maintenance on the road between Jansenville and Pierce, Peterson, Peston, 10 of 16 kilometers, R63 upgrading of the road between Fort Beaufort and Alice, which is 20 kilometers. In all the above mentioned projects, contractors have been appointed and they will be on site as soon as the COVID-19 regulations have been incorporated into the health and safety and approved by Sunrun. In addition to this, N2 from Green River, Nongsamba near Grisho Airport to Buffalo River in King Williamstown will be upgraded. The tender for the project closed in February with the award expected in July 2020. It is also pleasing to see that there are two tenders on at evaluation stage for special maintenance to R56 from N6 to Dotras as well as from Dotras to Indo. This project will surely have a positive impact. Campbell uh, have spent our budget at 5.4 billion in 2020-21 and 6.4 billion for 2021-2022. As a government, our focus is to ensure that we use the available resources to prioritize roads that benefit all sectors of society. This commitment has been reiterated in the many engagement we ha- we have had with our stakeholders. On transport operation, the mobility of our communities is necessary in, pro- in improving the lives of our communities. The department will continue to support subsidies, bus passenger transport services to improve the movement of people through Algoa bus 
company which operates in the Nelson Mandela Metro and Africa Best Limited. Honorable MC, we can't hear you at all. I'm sure you could cut. Honorable Deputy Chair of Chess, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Honorable Embassy. Is, is it my turn now? Honorable Embassy. Is it, is it my turn as human settlements? Because no, I can't hear you clearly. Honorable Embassy. Uh, oh, 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 sorry. Hello. Another one, Mr. Tigan. We seem to have lost honorable taken. I'm not sure then, uh, probably we should go to human settlement. Uh, honorable company will be taking over the shelf shares from me. Okay. Yeah, we have lost um, the technical staff. I agree that we have lost uh, honorable uh, MSC Tikan. They are trying to rejoin. Are you winning, Moravis? Or shall we pass to the next item? Okay. Other members will ask the secretary to read the next item on the agenda. of vote number 11, the Department of
connection case connection then we come back may we may we officer adjourn a honorable presiding officer Uh, I support that proposal. It's uh, Stevenson. That we, adjourn. we adjourn for five minutes. Thank you. Deputy Chief, we must just put it on hold and not also us all go out. Thank you very much. Okay. On honourable members, honourable members. Honourable um, member. Yes, honourable members. Honourable speaker. There, 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 there's a lot of static on the line, and we are just being disconnected. So, so can we please just break for fifteen minutes? Just take a break of 15 minutes while IT sorts out and then we will inform members to, to reconnect. I think that would be in the best because we are just being disconnected one by one and we are struggling to reconnect. May I Thank propose you, that we do that? Thank you so much, honorable members. My apologies. Thank Let's you, honorable speaker, speaker and for the break. Just grab yourself a cup of something warm. Reconnected. We are not going anywhere. We'll wait here. <laughs> Don't leave your rooms. <laughs> 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 you but out, out with people like Nishitombo. Do you see Nishitombo with his hat? <laughs> dress code of Nishitombo. Dress code of Nishitombo. He's also disconnected. Unfortunately, he was also disconnected. We'll see you back in 15 minutes, honorable members. Thank you so much. Of course. Thank you, honorable speaker. I'm going to the house. I'm going to go to the i
Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Tigana, are you in? Yes, Honorable Speaker. Yes, please just take your two last minutes and uh, con- con- complete. Thank you, Honorable Chair of Chairs. Uh, the period of COVID-19 also has seen us implementing 24-hour-7 are built with the overtime implications for an elongated period of time. This has further strengthened our resolve to finalize negotiations with our stakeholders with a view to start uh, 24 hour service shift in nine traffic stations. Uh, on committee program, uh, honorable members, with uh, drought ravaging our province, we have also seen an increase in the number of stray animals that wander on a near our roads, causing havoc for motorists. Going forward through EPWP initiatives, we will enhance the erection of the fence along our roads in Buffalo City Metro and Moma local municipality, as well as the management of vegetation. Uh, we are resolute in our commitment to improve access to economic and social amenities, and as such, we will be using alternative ways of construction to upgrading a road from Cape College to the Ngubumbela Cricket Park in Hilltown, Raymond Clubber, we create about 49,000 work opportunities through EPWP projects. Uh, with regard to the re- realization of our entities, GTAC has been conducted to conduct a feasibility study with regard to the amalgamation of our aviation directorate, Maibuya Transport Corporation, and the government fleet management services. That work is still underway and will report back to the House on progress during the course of the financial year. While we await the conclusion of the work, GFMS will continue providing fleet management services to the provincial government. We will also strive for continuous improvement in the maintenance of the fleet with EMS vehicles being being our priority. The department tells Central Workshop in Mtata and Port Elizabeth that were formerly road workshops will be customized to provide the needed minor road services of the EMS fleet. And this is intended to provide an efficient and effective services for the increased availability of the EMS fleet. To enable us to seamlessly provide this service, we wish to make a special plea to all departments to ensure that they pay us on time. Speaker, I hereby table the policy speech for the Department of the Transport with the annual performance plan for both the Department and Maibuya Transport Corporation. I thank you. Uh, Have we lost the chair? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Tigana. Um, I will now ask the secretary to read the next order of the day. Tabling of budget vote 11. Human settlements. I will request the the member of the executive council responsible for human settlements to present the budget vote. Thank you, Honorable Chair of Chairs. Tibuli se kusom lo mo begekle ne se kela laike inkulu ba patiswa begekle o tabam kuikum kulo la ulo la ba patiswa. Amalunga bege kleyo enji o wiso mteto. Inko keli zombu towe sizo ukongo lose. Na mashaga ni ake. Ama nyama kalezo politiko. Ama kosa apezule bukulu mendeni. Ama kosa esebe. Kunye na bobonka banda babu keleyo ku Facebook Live. Inda telezi koe nga kumbezi chonge nene mimbe a yezo politiko kulendu. Eh, Madam Speaker and Honorable Members were meeting virtually as Honorable Members of the August House that is officially named after one of the greatest and finest revolutionaries of our times and the first democratically elected premier of this province, a revenue trialist, Utatao Raymond Mshaba, affectionately known as Umri, 
Utatundobe. The country celebrates his centenary this year. This great man, together with his peers, stood the test of time and fought to the end until they achieved the objectives of the campaign. I go to freedom in our lifetime, close quote. Um, Ray ran the race, especially when the African National Congress-led government ruled the country for the first time after the apartheid regime was dismantled. These were very difficult times in our country, particularly in the province. He and his collective united the province from th three administrations, the Transkei and Siskei Pandustans, as well as the old Cape Provincial Administration. This was not an easy task at all, and as such, we take our hats off in respect of this great leader. Madam Speaker and the Honorable Members of the House, as we have now come to an end of the fifth administration, we take stock of the great work performed by our predecessors with strength and perseverance. We will move swiftly and objectively into the sixth administration with a clear mandate, which is to build the Eastern Cape we want. This is a new dawn, and so the message is very clear that our people are no longer interested in words and promises. They want tangible deliverables. Hence, the government has now made a clear on call of Tumamina and Kauleza. Chair, Honorable Chair of Chairs, COVID-19 pandemic demands all of us as government from all spheres and other stakeholders to do something so as to fight the spread of coronavirus in the province. Given the reality that the winter season is approaching and that this vi vicious virus enjoys the cold, the department has already provided more than 80 houses to most vulnerable and destitute groups in OR Tambo and Krisani. We will continue to provide more houses to our districts during this period and beyond. In instances where the situation is most unbearable, the department provides temporal structures certainly will be expected to provide more as we continue to experience climate change. And Honorable Chair of Chairs, I would like to pronounce on these following important issues. On the issue of land, as the department, we have land that is not suitable for housing development and will avail that land to sector department. And the next thing is the rental stock Honorable Chair of Chairs and Honorable Members, the Department will continue to work with SHRA and vigorously focus on areas where we do not have footprint. We have started at KSD with a project that will yield 540 units at Maiden Farm in New Brighton. I will go straight, Honorable Chair of Chairs, to the priorities for 2021. I'll skip other pages due to time. The Department acknowledges the sector priorities However, due to the competing priorities and the declining fiscals, the department will focus on the following priorities. The upscaling of the housing opportunities with special focus and prioritization of destitute, vulnerable groups and military veterans. Systematic unblocking of historically blocked projects. Accelerated registration and issuance of the title data to homeowners. Increased empowerment opportunities for SMMEs, including women and youth upgrading of informal settlements and provision of social and economic amenities and continuous use and application of innovative and sustainable building technologies. As the department, we have targeted to provide 8,123 housing opportunities, of which 4,181 service sites across our region out of the total targeted units, 4,168 units are targeted for rural housing opportunities and 3,590 units will be developed in urban areas. And in this regard, we'll intensify education and awareness to beneficiaries on EPHP and FLISP. In addition to this, the department is targeting to deliver 240 housing opportunities for military veterans and 200 units under the financial financed linked individual subsidy program, which is called FLISP. Under the Remedial Works Program, which is formerly known as the Rectification Program, the department will rectify 1,217 units in the following regions. OR Tambo 135, Amatole 118, BCM 160, Nelson Mandela 468, Sarah Parman 142, and Chrisani 194 at a value of 171 million. And also, 
we have 156 historically blocked projects, which consist of 48,961 units at a total cost of 4.5 billion. In this financial year 2020-21, the department will spend 198 million to unblock 1,121 units in 84 projects. Through the Title Deeds Restoration Grant, Honorable Chair of Chairs, the department will register 10,000 title deeds for pre-2014 category. And within the HSDG, 5,000 title deeds will be registered in the post-2014 category and 3,000 title deeds will be handed over. The department is encouraging municipalities to allocate service sites to approved beneficiaries and will strive to ensure that beneficiaries are provided with title deeds prior to construction of houses. This will assist in addressing the perennial challenge of illegal occupation. Honorable Chair of Chairs, the department has refenced the 30% spending of the construction budget allocation for women and youth contractors, which amounts to 440 million. Furthermore, the department will continue to implement 30% subcontracting of local based SMMEs, including people living with disabilities and military veterans, for all the projects over 30 million in line with the requirements of the preferential procurement framework regulations of 2017. A total of 88 SMMEs will be supported through training and work opportunities. In heading to the clarion call on job creation by the Honorable Premier Oumnum Zanaudu Babalo Oscar Mabuyan, in his State of the Province address, the department will yet again prioritize creation of 15,300 jobs in construction projects and through the expanded public works program. Honorable Chair of Chairs, our province is confronted with the negative impact of urbanization, and at this point, we have over 568 informal settlements in our towns and cities. The department is therefore targeting to upgrade 113 informal settlements in various phases at the cost of 270 million in the following regions. Alfred Zoy, Amatole, Christiani, Joe Kabi, O.R. Tambo, and Sarah Bartman, excluding the two metros which are catered for under the Urban Settlement Development Grant, which is USDG. Honorable Chair of Chairs, as part of integrated human settlements delivery, two new MPCCs will be constructed this financial year. Ulwan Julubomvu and Dabangulu Nemnanti MPCC in Blue Crane will also continue with the planning of the KSD, KSD uh, uh, in Mkanduli MPCC and Mbonguini MPCC in Bizan in honor of Mama Uini Matikizela Mandela. Honorable Chair of Chairs, as we continue to explore innovative and sustainable building technology, we'll adhere to the national norm of allocating 2% of the total HSDG, which costs 36 million. And also on the high impact priority development nodes that we have as the province, we have seven, which is Bay West Development Area, Bethelsdorp Corridor, Yudenhei Kwanobushe Corridor, Restin Scenery Park, East London West, Buffalo City Airport Node, Ntata Central Business District. Out of the HPHDAs in Buffalo City, we will yield 642 units, and in Nelson Mandela, 714 units, and in KSD, 193 units. The department will relocate about 1,300 households from Orange Grove to state-acquired land in Boxwood. This relocation will include the existing temporary amenities, namely schools and the clinic working together with all relevant government departments and the Buffalo City Metro. Honorable Chair of Chairs, over the past years, the province has been exposed to a number of incidents, some of which have been declared as disasters. It has been proven that in most instances, the human settlement is the most affected department in terms of response. It is therefore our intention to develop a disaster management strategy for the department in this financial year, working with COCTA in line with provincial disaster management framework. What Honorable Missy, Chair of please. Honorable, you left with now. Okay, thank you, uh, Honorable Chair of Chairs. Looking at the 
outlook, we have units there and the budget that is allocated in page 19, of which we've, uh, and also how many informal settlements in page 20 that will be upgraded in different municipalities and the budget that is allocated and the USDG that is allocated to the two metros and the full budget, it's in page 22 of the department, which amounts to 2.3 billion. And in page 23, it is stated which program will receive how much from the budget. Going straight to the conclusion, Honorable Chair of Chairs, in our zeal and commitment to promote social compact, in the last financial year, we made a clarion call where we appealed to our communities to participate actively and be agents of change in their own projects and speak out when something wrong is happening. The department further displayed an information box encouraging all members of the public and staff to make suggestions on how to improve service delivery. I wish to applaud members of the public who came to the fore cautioning us of the wrongs that are happening inside and outside the department. In the same vein, I wish to extend a word of gratitude to other state organs for the sterling work in assisting the department in its endeavors to fight fraud and corruption. Honorable Chair of Chairs, our government is always guided by values and principles of the Freedom Charter when we set and design service delivery imperatives. Mm -hmm. This is a new dawn, Kauleza Siakatala. Our most vulnerable and destitute are without doubt a priority to the department. We care for them. And in doing so, we are always reminded of those martyrs and titans who sacrifice their lives for our country. And I want, would like to quote from the Freedom Charter, let us all who love their people and country and say, as we say here, these freedoms will fight for side by side throughout our lives until we have won our liberty. This is the oath that all of us as public representatives and civil servants must take in order to further their wishes. Chair of Chairs, I hereby present the department's policy speech, strategic plan for the next five years, annual performance plan, operational plan, and service delivery improve, improvement plan. Thank you, Bayadeng. Thank you. Chair of Chess. Thank you. Thank you very much, MEC. Um, I will ask the secretary to read the next order of the day. Chair of Chess, tabling of the budget vote number 12, provincial treasury. Um, I will call upon the member of the executive committee responsible for provincial treasury to present his 2020-21 policy speech in terms of rule 202 sub rule 3. Honorable MEC. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Chair of Chairs, uh, uh, Honorable Chair of Chairs, uh, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Premier, Honorable <laughs> Ladies and Gentlemen, good day. Some Lomo, maybe as a cautious seven Zapans go, are you? If you are bound to a Nigel, are you? Whom in the Bakokili se pan bilim funo zabantu, uguze speno kwa zi kukula impilo, ya. So funa kwa ibe tele la kenga manja, ndi yo balu kandu balu msibinti nga minye kakulmente, kukreshweyo, nukunyweyo, wakubaliki le kubasente lukulu, kukumi nye sina kwa kukunya la yetu. We are compelled by the privileged position we are, uh, we are in, to stretch the little resources at our disposal to ensure we achieve more. Every cent, every rent, every effort we put in must go a long way. In the wisdom of the late founding president of Tanzania, Julius Mualimu Nyerere, by virtue of being privileged, we have an obligation towards the less fortunate. It was him who said, I quote, those who receive this privilege, therefore, have a duty to repay, to repay 
a sacrifice which others have made. They are like a man who has been given all the food available in a starving village in order that he might have strength to bring supplies back from a distant place. He takes this food and does not bring help to his brothers. He is a traitor. Close quote. We must avoid being the traitors to the sacrifices of others. We, we hope to witness a wave of enforcement and real consequence management with the enactment of the new amendments of the Public Audit Act. Honorable uh, Chair of Chairs, the 2021 financial year started on a rather undesirable note as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic affecting people's health and leading to loss of life. Our thoughts are with families that have lost their loved ones and we wish those infected a speedy recovery. As a government, the health and well-being of our people is vital. In the same vein, we should also protect our people's livelihood. The pandemic has had a negative impact on economic growth and also in the government's fiscal position. As a result, dealing a, pro a profound blow to businesses and jobs. Whilst the effect of COVID-19 pandemic is felt, the impact of credit rating downgrade by credit rating institutions, which translated to junk status for the country, is a double edge of the sword. Although the department's strategic priorities as outlined in the 2020-2025 strategic plan and the 2021 annual performance plan will remain the same. Adjustments will have to be made to accommodate the immense challenges which we are facing as a country and indeed as a province. These adjustments are addressed within the following four strategic priorities. Fiscal consolidation, supply chain management reforms, infrastructure support, and provincial and municipal governance and accountability. On fiscal consolidation, uh, the uh, chair of chairs, the constrained economy worsened by the pandemic, coupled with revenue collection shortfall, is affecting the provincial allocations and thus putting pressure on the already constrained fiscal. This extremely tight fiscal environment requires prudent financial management and efficient allocation of resources to address provincial priorities. This requires us to exercise fiscal discipline especially in light of the further budget cuts that have been implemented for the 2020 MTF and subsequent reprioritization as a result of the pandemic. Departments are just required to ensure that budgets and expenditure are aligned to core critical areas, whilst taking into consideration reprioritization of funds towards COVID-19 responses. We really must do with more with less. As such, provincial treasury will con continue to assist the provincial government in the current crisis and beyond to allocate the fiscal resources in an efficient and sustainable manner by mitigating the COVID-19 crisis and prioritizing areas that will have maximum impact on the lives of the people growth of the economy. On cost containing measures, uh, are currently in place, uh, they, they are currently in place and will continue over the, over the entire MTF period. We will intensify our efforts of ensuring that the province moves from consumption, from consumption expenditure to investment spending. To achieve this move, more focus will be placed on enforcing budget expenditure ceilings. And secondly, reduction of the wage bill. And thirdly, implementation of own revenue enhancement strategies. The low growth trends resulting from weak economic activity has led to, amongst others, a decline in government revenue thus necessitating efforts to explore ways of enhancing and increasing provincial revenue in line with the provincial revenue generation strategy and implementation of the recommendations of the research study that have identified new sources of own revenue. As at the end of March 2020, we collected, we had collected 2.031 billion revenue in revenue against our annual revenue target of 1.4 billion. Our commitment, sorry, Conan, our commitment for 2021 
is to collect not less than 1.6 billion rand in own revenue. Honorable Chair of Chairs, uncontrolled rise in personal in personnel expenditure is likely to have a negative impact on service delivery priorities, hence the need to manage, monitor, and reduce expenditure on compensation of employees to acceptable levels. Various measures have been put in place to curb the unsustainable rise in personnel costs in the province. That include the centralization of authorization of appointments on personnel and participating in the provincial coordinating monitoring team to optimize the utilization of human capital. Working with the Office of the Premier, we'll continue to validate service delivery models and organograms in an effort to manage compensation of uh, employees. Honorable members, specific interventions to address the challenges in the departments of health and education, as they are the biggest consumers of the provincial budget, will be undertaken. The current crisis makes it even more critical to provide support to these two departments on their COVID-19 business continuity plans. Following the announcement of the lockdown by the uh, president, provincial treasury issued a notice informing all provincial departments that the travel and subsistence budget for 2021 has been reduced by 45%. We are looking at reducing the budgets on other items such as communication, advertising, catering, training and development, transport, venues and facilities. This has yet to be concluded. These changes will be reflected as part of the process of the adjusted estimate process, which will be tabled later this year. Due to the current crisis, a total amount of 307 million was made available to the Department of Health uh, in order for the department to conduct testing, um, purchase the ventilators, uh, appoint enrolled nurses, and nursing assistants, um, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, to to fight fight the pandemic. This was done in accordance with Section 25 of, of the PFMA, that makes provision to emergency funding. An additional amount of 44.551 million was allocated from the 1920 Provincial Disaster Relief Grant in terms of Section 7 of the Division of Revenue for the purchasing of um, personnel, personal um, protective uh, uh, equipment for the Department of Health Workers. Uh, from the 500 billion rand, uh, there's further a 20 billion rand from, from that fiscal package announced by the president, which has been set aside to assist health institutions in the country to fight COVID-19 pandemic. Over and above the support provided to the two departments, health and education, during the current crisis, we've set up an intervention task team to identify the root causes of the existing challenges in both departments and to come up with realistic interventions and, where necessary, implement such uh, interventions. At the beginning of, the, of this financial year, we committed to work with the Office of the Premier to conduct a diagnostic research on the root cause of the continued large increase of accruals and payables carried by the Department of Health and Education at the end of every financial year. The data analysis research phases have been completed. We commit to finalize the study and further implement its recommendations to ensure that the Provincial Revenue Fund remains liquid and all payments at general accounts are adequately funded. We will also initiate a zero-based budgeting exercise instead of the conventional incremental budgeting to determine true departmental baselines uh, in, the, in the provincial departments. Honorable Chair of Chairs, as I indicated in this house during the retabling of the budget, we need to move with the repurposing of our state-owned entities in the province. We will therefore execute the long-standing report of the government technical advisory center on the maximization and efficiencies of public ent entities with the agency that it deserves. Our intention is to rationalize the, ta rationalize the targeted public entities in the province. I've already speak, spoken to the HOT to prepare an item that will further uh, this um, uh, action. On supply chain management reforms, uh, the National Treasury 
has since released the emergency procurement pro uh, procedures to deal with the pandemic. After resolution and final instruction note from National Treasury, the province has developed a local economic development uh, focused procurement process for the PPE, focusing on different streams, namely textile, um, chemical, sanitizer, and disinfectants, and plastic visors, and supply and de delivery of items non manufactured in the process. These emergency pro uh, procedures are in line with our support to SMEs in the implementation of the local economic development procurement framework and the preferential procurement regulations of 2017. The aim of the framework is to ensure maximum retention of provincial fiscal spend in the province and to stabilize declining sectors as a result of the economic crisis and deindustrialization. Added to that is to increase the productive uh, capacity of SMEs uh, and cooperatives in the province. As a department, we want to submit our unwavering commitment to grow and support small businesses. And one of such notable efforts is the improvement in the payment of creditors within a 30-day period, partly through uh, the implementation of the uh, Have I Been Paid invoice tracking system that was launched uh, late last year. We piloted this Honorable MEC, Honorable MEC, you have only two minutes left now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we piloted with the health provincial treasurers and, and TISRA. Having observed the positive results from this application, we are now rolling it out in all departments. We will closely monitor the usage of the system uh, to make improvements. Uh, we will continue to mitigate uh, against the underspending of budgets, which is as a result of non-adherence to procurement uh, plans. Another priority identified sharply last year was the growth of government employees doing business with the state. We will continue to confront head on uh, this unethical tendency. Uh, the irregular expenditure is part of the uh, provincial audit turnaround plan, but owing to its immediate impact on government reputation, provincial treasury, working with the provincial department, will continue to embark on a project to reduce irregular, fruitless, and wasteful expenditure. And provincial treasury will continue to assist municipalities to implement uh, to implement municipal regulations and discipline. Uh, Honorable uh, Chair of Chess, on the three programs we have, Program 1 for administration, the portion 176.854 million, Program 2, 84.382 million, Program 3, 29.212 million, Program 4, 92.033 million, and Program 5, 61.749 million. We commit to use these resources economically to finance the commitments we have outlined. Uh, I wish to express my gratitude to all the men and women of the provincial treasury through the leadership of the um, SG who have immensely contributed towards the improvement of our system. Honorable uh, Speaker, allow me to, I'm um, a chair of chairs, allow me to table the formally the strategic plan for 2020 to 2025, annual performance plan for the 2020 21 financial year, and operation plan for 2020. 2020 financial year. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable MEC. Um, I will ask the Secretary to read the next order of the day. Thank you, Chair of Chase. Stabling of the budget vote number 14. Sports, Recreation, Arts and Culture. Thank you. Um, I will call upon the member responsible, the member of the Executive Council responsible for agriculture, that is Department of uh, Rural Development, Agrarian and Reform. Uh, to present yes. her 2020-21 Over to you, Honorable MEC. Honorable Chair of Chairs. 
Chief, Chief Sen, I have read Department of Sport, Recreation, Arts and Culture. Yes, Sports, Recreation, Arts and Culture. Yes. Excuse me, uh, Honorable Mess. We are calling now any uh, responsible for this. Okay, Honorable Chief. Yes. Honorable MEC. The Honourable Chair of Chairs and all presiding officers, the Honourable Premier and MECs, MPLs, traditional leadership, our stakeholders and the general populace of the home of the legends. Good afternoon. Today we table the today we table the policy speech just hours after the continent has celebrated Africa Day. And we are tabling in the midst of a vicious pandemic, popularly known as COVID-19 a pandemic that has necessitated a change in how we do things. We do things virtually these days. We also note the measures employed by government to flatten the curve with respect to COVID-19, the measures such as lockdown and prohibition of large gatherings. These have had a negative impact on social economic activities of our creatives as well as athletes. In this regard, Honorable Chair of Chairs, as part of our response to COVID-19, we are establishing a relief package for artists and athletes whose lives have been disrupted by COVID-19. Allow me, Honorable Chair of Chairs, to just go straight to the programs to save time, and I will start by cultural affairs. As a means of diversifying the economy, the department commits on investing in the cultural and creative industries as a contributor to the province's prosperity. We will work with local artists, communities, the traders, government agencies, as well as private enterprises. With respect to engineering of craft hubs, the National Department of Sport, Recreation, Arts and Culture has confirmed the establishment of the Eastern Cape Performing Arts Institute thereafter referred to as ECPI. We are awaiting the finalization of the white paper, and whilst we are waiting for the finalization, we are setting up governance structure as well as the working model for ECPI. The ECPI would see the amalgamation of Guild Theatre and Opera House and will result into the footprint of these two theatres across the province, and, and thereby ensuring that the services that are rendered by these two theatres go beyond the two metros uh, and revive our art centres. This year, the department will introduce digital platforms to ensure compliance with social distancing whilst providing an opportunity to artists to showcase their talent. The National Arts Festival that is, current, that is held annually in Makanda will pioneer the hosting of virtual performances, exhibitions, and e-commerce platforms. We are committed to establishing the Film Commission, uh, but the lack of re financial resources has hampered our progress. However, we remain working on the building blocks that include the development of the provincial Film Policy framework. Honorable Chair of Chairs, moving to languages. As a department, we are committed in promoting uh, the four languages in our province is Kosa, Isisutu, Africans, and English, as well as their dialects. We will do this by collecting expressions and stories written in these dialogues. We will also embark on projects that promote Khoisan and Sign Language. We are also working with PENSAL, Eastern Cape Provincial Language Committee, and other uh, committees uh, to ensure that we develop orthography and terminology of indigenous languages. With respect to support that would be given to self-published authors, 
Honorable Churches, this financial year, we are targeting to support 100 books for publishing this year. The support includes editing, cover designs, printing, and ISBN registration. We will further provide platforms to writers using di district and provincial literature festivals that will be conducted virtually. We are also establishing Masitete Sign Language Structure, which represents the deaf community. And through our Isivivane publications, we will publish short stories and poems targeting poets from designated groups. With respect to museums and heritage services, we will continue to conduct education on national symbols and orders in order to, to, to instill identity and nationhood. We will do this through Amatol and Albany Museum that will conduct virtual programs as a pilot. Honorable Chair of Chairs and Honorable Members, we are working on repurposing our museums by introducing curio shops and internet cafes to attract, to attract, amongst others, the young people. We will work with the Eastern Cape Parks and Tourism Agency in marketing our four big museums, the Bay World, Albany, Amatol, and East London Museum. This is done to market these two tourists. We will continue to with the exchange program with Lower Saxon in Germany for skills development and heritage management. Honorable Chair of Chairs and Honorable Members will note that in the State of the Province Address, the Premier declared 2020 as the year of Raymond Mklaba and Faisalemin. The provincial government through OTP and DISRAC will host centenary celebrations virtually, as well as establish legacy projects dedicated for these two icons. In a bid to embrace our heritage, we will organize programs to honor men and women who have earned the title of being called military veterans. One of these projects will be a construction of a statue in honor of Canon James Talata at St. Matthew's Anglican Church at Koboko, and we will do that in partnership with the municipality. Coming to libraries and archives, with respect to archives, the department will enhance access to records for research purposes. We will establish electronic records through an online portal um, and participate in access to memory, which is a national web-based web archival system. This will be rolled out in our repositories in King Williamstown, Port Elizabeth, as well as in Tata. With respect to libraries, Honorable Chair of Chairs, we will continue with our program of providing internet connectivity to our libraries and the procurement of e-books. We will reprioritize our financial resources from infrastructure projects to maintenance of the existing libraries and augment operations thereof. With respect to sports and recreation, COVID-19 uh, has disrupted our plans and we are now going to invest more on sporting equipment and apparel. We are doing this, uh, Honorable Chairperson, to ensure that clubs are better resourced and ready for when sporting activities resume. Our main focus is still on youth, women and people with disabilities. South Africa will be hosting the 2023 Netball Cup in, 20, in Cape Town. And, and with effect from this year, we will be paying more attention on resourcing netball clubs. We will continue to resource all our academies for conditioning and training athletes using virtual and non-contact platforms. Working together with municipalities, we will monitor construction and utilization of sporting facilities. Our, our province, Honorable Chair of Chairs, is not immune from governance challenges that face sport in South Africa. Some governance weaknesses have seriously compromised the image of the province, resulting in exodus of talent to other provinces. In trying to rescue the plight of our athletes, the department has set aside financial in injection towards the recovery and participation of border bulldogs in the national league. The department is also in engaged in Department of Education with regard to school sport in order to ensure readiness when programs restart. We continue to encourage families and individuals to maintain active, healthy lifestyles, like I am doing, Honorable Chair of Chairs, and I hope that Honorable Members are going to join me. Through home-based recreational activities, literally not during this period. We are developing programs geared at encouraging children and youth 
to participate in recreational activities through the use of animation, online platforms, and electronic sports. With regard to partnerships, we will strengthen our partnerships with the four institutions of higher learning in the province for research and training in arts, culture, and heritage, and sport. We will also continue with the relations we have with the Free State Province to enhance opportunities of our crafters and artists. The concluded memorandum of understanding with multi-choice will see the development of film, sport, and sporting infrastructure. And through this partnership, the department will also work closely with ATV, also known as Bumakapa TV, to broadcast some of our key events that like the National Arts Festival in Makanda. We are also pleased to announce the revival of the working relations with ECPTA to enhance heritage, cultural, and sports tourism in the province. With respect to administration, Honorable Chair of Chairs, under the circumstances which are presented by the pandemic, the department is now working on strengthening our ICT to enhance efficiencies. This will help us to improve the turnaround time with respect to performance information as well as tracking of invoices for the speedy payment of uh, service providers. We will continue to implement accelerated women empowerment program, which has seen the transformation of the executives uh, in the department. We now have 83% of female representativity in the executive and no other department comes close to this achievement. And for that, we are proud. It must, however, be noted that Honorable MEC, you yes, are only two minutes. Thank you so much. We, 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 however, note that much more needs to be done with respect to senior management as well as management, as these levels are both below 50%. We are at 1.7 of the required 2% of the employment of, of people living with disabilities, and we have thus far employed 52 interns, and we'll be keeping them until the end of the financial year. With respect to Provincial Arts and Sports Relief Fund, order of the Chair of Chairs, in light of the effect of COVID-19 pandemic, we have established a Provincial Relief Fund for the cultural, creatives, and sports industries with an aim to bring about social relief and economic recovery. The fund seeks to provide relief to those in the sectors who have lost income due to the cancellation of events that have been, have been planned. Further details will be communicated uh, towards the end of the week through a media launch. Honorable Speaker, allow me to present to this House and the people of this province the 2020-25 Strategic Plan, 2020-21 APPs, 2020-21 Operational Plans, and Budget Summary of $1.2 billion for the Department and our only entity at that. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable MEC. Um, I will ask the Secretary to read the next order of the day. Thank you, Chair of Chairs. Tabling of budget vote number 15, the Department of Safety and Liaison. I will call upon the member of the Executive Council responsible for safety and liaison to present her 2020-21 policy speech in terms of rule 202 sub rule 3. Honorable MEC. Thank you, Honorable Chair of Chairs, the Speaker, Deputy Speaker, uh, members of the ex Executive and all peace-loving citizens of the Eastern Cape Province. Uh, Honorable Chair of Chairs, the financial year 2020-21 will be a year of uncharted waters that are laden with unexpected battles for the entire country. Our collective response to coronavirus demands that the entire nation seize control of the virus. The division and the in independence of our provinces will be in the practical test of our resolute response of beating the pandemic. The Eastern Cape is no different in this regard. Our leadership and support of citizens must pave a shining example for the success of implementing safety measures of social distancing, hygiene, and a new way of engagement. The safety and security sector will not be spared from challenges that 
many other departments face, such as health, finance, education, and uh, others. I'm quite certain the occasion of the state of the province address SOPA is still vivid in our minds, upon which the Honorable Premier affirmed that, I quote, community safety is our responsibility, and all of us must work towards, together with the police to ensure safety of the people in the community, particularly the vulnerable groups. The strategic directive of the Premier has never been as relevant as it is now. As we augment the concerned efforts of our government, business, labor, and civil society at large to curb the spread of the coronavirus, we ought to acclimatize our strategic path to the immediate, medium, and long-term challenges that have been brought forth by the COVID-19 pandemic. Honorable Chair of Chess, please allow me to hasten to get to the business of the day. I am pleased to present to this August House and no and to the people of the Eastern Cape an amended plan that will contribute to the reduction of crime from our communities. This plan has taken into cognizance the emergence of COVID-19, the proposed provincial program of action plan, invites multiple government sectors, age group, population, religions, business, traditional and other institutions to mobilize and create a safer Eastern Cape with reliable, accountable and effective policy. As a matter of agency, and in response to the rock-solid confidence displayed by the people of the Eastern Cape in the African National Congress on 9th May 2019, we are certain that the strategic plan that we are tabling here today will indeed take the province to a higher trajectory with regard to the fight against crime. We are particularly paying long overdue attention to crime against women and children and the most vulnerable of society. On the 26th of February, the Premier launched the Gender-Based Violence and Femicide Rapid Response Initiative in our term. As a member of the Provincial Interim Steering Committee, I wasted no time in advancing one of the pillars of safer schools and families. 38 schools in the Lusikisig and Flagstaff were brought together to empower learners on how to blow the whistle on sexual offenders and how to deal with perpetrators that are meant to safeguard them. This session was also sought to bridge the gap between parents, children, and communities at large. Honorable Chair of Chairs, the last five years of the democratic government has witnessed interesting policy developments and experimentation. The White Paper on Safety and Security 2016 and the Provincial Safety Strategy as some of the good development that took place during the fifth administration. Despite these policy interventions and strategies, our province is still confronted by high levels of violent crimes. At the same time, we continue to see a scary rise in gender-based violence and femicide and murder, especially in the rural parts of the province. The women, elderly, and children are on the receiving end of this inhumanity. Our institutions of higher learning are also increasingly becoming a hive of gender-based violence and femicide. It is in this context that the sixth administration has vowed that we cannot continue with the same insanity. In the words of Albert Esten, insanity is doing the same thing cover and over again and experiencing different results. As the coronavirus state, we need a radical review and overhaul of our current approaches towards the creation of safe communities. During the MTSF period, we shall firm up and strengthen our cooperation, collaboration and integration of efforts with all our stakeholders in the endeavor to mobilize our communities behind the banner of a safe and crime-free province. This department shall enter into binding agreements with our sister departments at local, provincial, and national level. We shall also work with non-governmental organizations and other institutions on specific areas of service delivery. We will continue with our robust engagement with the local sphere of government in order to ensure that each municipality adopts and resource a community safety plan that will be driven and located at a ward level. Through community safety forums, all relevant stakeholders shall be consulted and encouraged to join hands and adequately respond to the clarion call made by the citizens of the provinces when they said, a quote, we want to be and feel safe where we live, close quote. We are going to strengthen and consolidate our collaboration efforts with Community Police Forum in the province. We shall ensure that we contribute significantly in all outstanding and future discussions about 
the positioning and resourcing of this function with a clear view that community participation will be maximized in order to succeed in defeating crime and its care factors and effects. The Premier has given us a directive to resuscitate the Justice Crime and Prevention Security Cluster as a standalone structure for more effective and a great approach to service delivery. I confirm that this is at the top of the list of our priorities and is receiving requisite attention. We have seen a disturbing situation where some of the criminal cases of gender-based and domestic violence cases are stuck out of the court role for one reason or other. In this term, we shall roll out the court watching brief program prioritizing gender-based violence cases. This intervention seeks to provide information and on reason for the withdrawal, dismissal, and striking of the court roll of these cases. This requires strategic and programmatic partnership with institutions of higher learning with law faculties. This initiative will allow to effective oversight over the police role in ensuring court red case dockets are handled properly, but most importantly, this will result in the identification of system pro systematic problems to be addressed by the provincial LAPS management, the National Prosecuting Authority and others within the justice system, thus enabling an improved turnaround time in these cases. Honorable Chair of Chess, we shall oversee the establishment and functionality of the provincial DNA testing laboratory work in this regard as it is an advanced stage. This infrastructure will ensure speedy finalization of criminal cases without relying on their provinces for these critical services. The sixth administration will bring the repositioning of the department to be the center of anti-crime activism. Consistent with the public pronouncement by the Honorable Premier, we have already engaged with the DPSA with a view to rename the department into the Department of Community Safety with relevant capacity building. All of these strategic interve interventions are aimed, among others, at placing the citizens of the province as developmental champions and agents of change for crime-free province. Our strategy serves as a roadmap towards the implementation of the political mandate of the governing party, the African National Congress. Honorable Chair of Chess, the coronavirus pandemic has forced us to go back to the drawing board and revisit our strategies in the fight against crime as well as crime prevention. It is against this background that I present to you an addendum to the originally submitted policy speech as per the rules of the Eastern Cape Provincial Level Government Legislature and on behalf of the Department of Safety and Liaison. Uh, the Department of Safety and Liaison has confirmed and committed to do the following during this financial year. Establishment of the Provincial Strategic for Police Secretariat for Police Services and rename of the Department to Community Safety. Re-establishment of the Justice Crime Prevention Security. Establishment of Provincial Oversight Committee. Rebranding and raising public awareness of the Department. Monitor all five established frontline service delivery in the kingdoms. Develop a tool to monitor and assess the effectiveness of metropolis and customization of monitoring tools to meet the objective of civilian secretariat for police services, as well as to make them responsive to provincial imperatives, including COVID-19. Dig digitalization of the monitoring tools to meet the demands of the fourth industrial revolution, oversee the establishment of DNA testing laboratory, piloting the court watching brief, Docket analysis and oversight uh, of priority cases. Uh, Honorable Chair of Chairs, the first and primary response to the spread of coronavirus is social distancing. Consequently, public meetings of whatever purpose and or nature, either than funerals, are prohibited in terms of the disaster management act regulations. Accordingly, the department has amended its target as follows. The planned target of failed 14 mainstreaming and transformation programs implemented will be reduced to 10. Creative methods of delivery will include virtual meetings and development of policy guidelines on three main sectors. Social crime prevention programs to be done through alternative media streams. 
policy and accountability engagements will be done virtually. The department will monitor all police stations focusing on SAPS compliance with the Disaster Management Act and regulations. Research on policy need and priorities will have to be discontinued and be submitted with a research product on the impact of COVID-19 in the Eastern Cape, in particular as it relates to matters of safety. The department will be discontinuing all the accountability engagement that required physical mass meeting, but seek alternative platforms to engage thereon. Essentially, the work of the department involves direct interaction personal conduct between the departmental officials and the SAPS personnel, during which process traveling between district offices and police stations with papers exchanging hands in fundamental characteristics of our work in such an environment that social distances may be difficult to uphold. Nevertheless, and notwithstanding the demands of COVID-19, the department will continue to forge ahead rock solid partnership and discharge its mandate, taking advantage of technology and the virtual mode of transmitting services to the people. In this regard, we have identified community radio stations as an important communication platform and conduct between the department and the citizens. Honorable Chair of Chairs, the coronavirus pandemic demands creative and innovative approaches from what has historically been implemented. These diseases have forced society to react from everyday activities involving social interaction and shared community spaces. At the center of this approach, there should be the strategic and pivotal role played by the ordinary citizens. The youth in particular hold a key to... Honorable MEC, please round up. We have only two minutes left. Two okay. minutes left. Thank you. Okay. Honorable Chair of Chairs, we remain steadfast committed to the transformation and mainstreaming of the designated groups during this financial season. We plan to ensure that at least 10 programs are designated and implemented in order to achieve this important task. Our people, regardless of their gender, age, abilities, must enjoy the same fruits of a free and safe society. On the economic front, the department is full is in full support of local economic development strategy and will sustain its commitment to buy goods and products produced locally. Honorable Chair of Chairs, I present this budget policy speech at the backdrop of the global devastation, corona attack on humankind, this contagious virus is spread uncontrollably, will undermine all the efforts that we are presenting here today. The department will get a and equipment, equip all the employees with the necessary knowledge and personal protective equipment. Honorable Chair of Chairs, the allocation is broken down for COEs, 83 million goods and services, 29 million transfers, 320,000 and capital, 3.3 million. However, this budget has since been cut by 7.9 million, 108 million. Honorable Deputy Chair of Chairs, as per the rules of the Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature and of the files of the Department of Safety and Licensing, I table the 2021-2021 budget policy speech, the 2020-25 strategic plan, and 2021 annual performance plan, the 2020 annual operational plan, and the 2020-21 service delivery improvement plan for vote 15. I thank you. And thank you, Honorable MEC. Um, I will ask the Secretary to read the next order of the day. Thank you, Chair of Chairs. Tabling of budget vote number three, Department of Health. Thank you very much. Excuse me, Secret- Secretariat. Um, as I will be calling upon the member of the executive committee responsible for the Department of Health to present a 2020-21 policy speech in terms of Rule 202, Sub Rule 3. I will be also handing over <coughs> the chair 
to the Honorable Speaker who has given us the opportunity to stand in as the other presiding officers elected in terms of Rule 28 of the Rules of the Legislature. Over to you, Honorable MEC, for help. And over to you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair of Chairs, Honorable Speaker, and the House at large led by the Premier, Honorable Guests, good afternoon. Chair, you shall allow me to speak as I have provided an intensive speech that speak to cover the issues of time on a summarized version. And I would start to say since the official disaster declaration of COVID-19 by President Ramaphosa on the 22nd of March, we've been had to work developing a strategy to manage the spread of the virus. The measures announced by the president, including hygiene, crowd regulations and lockdown have helped the pandemic in the province. And given that we have been given chances of dealing with the pandemic at a point that we saw that our numbers were rising, we had a revised provincial strategy to deal with COVID-19. And that then gave us areas where we looked at breaking chains of transmission and mitigate COVID-19 deaths and economic disruptions, eliminate ho low high risk transmissions at Joe Gabi, Alfonso and Sarah Batman through targeted tracing, isolation and quarantine, curb and suppress outbreaks in our Tambo and Krisani districts through village and cluster mass screening, quarantine, testing and isolation, attack hotspots through lockdown in high transmission areas by what? And Honorable Speaker, we know today where the, uh, the statistics stand in terms of where we want to go. But then again, we have adopted the community-based approach, Masipatisane, and that means and meant to us that we had to revive the IGR war room government strategy, and that is based on the following. Implementation is driven by a fixed team of testing interventions. Patient testing positive for COVID-14 are now going not to be given a choice for safe isolation, but will be isolated and hospitalized. Contacts of those positive are subjected to screening and quarantining till results confirm their status. Over and above the clinical presentations, the pandemic has exposed some deficiencies within the health system. This presents an opportunity for us to fast track preparing our facilities and staff to employ, to prepare for NHI implementation. To deliver quality health care for our people. The department is currently working under regulations of the disaster. However, the executive management team has been instructed to adopt a business continuity model to ensure that the services of our people and to our people continue to be rendered without any interruptions. The department has been exposed to the fear, anxiety, panic, and uncertainty that was brought by COVID-19. This presented itself even through the protest demonstrations seen from various facilities around the province. I have since initiated an MEC labor meetings that are sitting every Friday at 10 to address, amongst other things, consultations, PPE provision, and employee wellness as means to ensure stability within the department. And through partnerships with Public Works, we have started to refurbish 25 facilities around the province to ensure that they are compliant and ready to admit COVID-19 patients and beyond the pandemic. What we have agreed to do was to actually create some areas that we are saying as we need to upgrade our hospitals let us use the opportunity to make sure that as we get out of COVID and post-COVID we're able to look at our issues as they work. Up to that in terms of human resources we've taken 822 out of the granted 8,000 of 
workers that were able to look at who are unemployed as nurses. Let me jump immediately to look at performance review. As highlighted in the speech, Chair, allow me to not really get to that, but just give an indication to say that performance review is based on the 100 days that was presented and is highlighted in the following page on the six areas that we actually looked at, which was hospital food quality improvements, community outreach programs in Alpha and Zorkistan and Buffalo City districts, Waterworth Hospital casualty conditions improved, and CEO appointed, eight NHI clinics opened in Oar Tambo, health summit convened to set the tone of the term, 333 employed nurses, remember the 500 that we spoke about, and 102 non-clinical staff appointments that were there. Chair, allow me to jump immediately to the exposés in terms of newspapers about the state of our facilities and buildings that have propelled us to appraise you with the report on the investments on infrastructure done in the past financial year as follows. For my psychiatric hospital, Ward 15 and Ward 2, where it is doctor's accommodation has been done, accommodation and balance style hospital, France Perry Clinic, and that gives a total of 36 million spent on Chris Army as an investment. But clear hospital roofing and urgent maintenance at Impilison Hospital that gave us 22.3 million for Joe Cardi. When you look at the PE provincial mental unit in Port Elizabeth at the cost of 20 million, Kubela TP Hospital upgrades at 15 million, New Hamburg Clinic and upgrades in Willow Bay Clinic. Fencing and guard house at SS Gita Hospital, giving us for four million spent on Amatole. Some Lomo, I see a ganga, Ukuba, Natina, Sinaki, Samanani, Ezi, Bodom Tanza, Inga Gundu, or West Beleko. Eighty two percent cervical cancer screening rate has been achieved. HPV vaccination and coloscopy services expansion to twenty five district hospital confirms that as is a good child for Ukuba Bandu to the Chambele Goods. Innovation in the new order is the new order of the day in the department, especially with regards to addressing clinical backlogs. In August 2019, Cecilia McKenna Hospital hosted an orthopedic camp with 19 patients operated, and Frontier did the same in November 2019, hosted ophthalmology and general service camp with 103 cataract and 63 major operations conducted. These initiatives brought much relief to patients and their families. On behalf of the department and the people of Eastern Cape, I would like to thank those doctors and institutional leadership of those who took time to actually participate in these camps, of course, at no cost to us. Let me jump to mental health check. Mental health has been getting attention from National Department of Health through the administrator and the monitoring by the minister, uh, ministerial ad advisor. We have taken issues and we have actually looked at dealing with the whole issue of looking at a health summit, which of course part of it has been done. But then again, we looked at any issues that I, I, I just have mentioned about the improvements in Komani, where we've got updates now that have taken 40 beds, 72 hour observation in Port Elizabeth. What is important for me to, I mean, to, 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 to mention is that we now have four newly qualified specialists appointed for Doranginza, Nelson Mandela Academic, and Cecilia Matuani. Nelson Mandela Academic Hospital is entrenching its status as a central hospital, having conducted eight more cochlear implants, appointment of two plastic surgeons who bring a smile to children with cleft palate, and also penal reconstruction for those young men who were victims of both circumcisions. Let me speak chair, to the organization structure that has been reviewed to ensure relevance and alignment to service delivery approach. This alignment also involves, involves micro-programming micro functionality to realize objectives of the sixth administration. Let me jump to EMS chair. EMS services was boosted with replacements of 269 vehicles, which were further fitted with tractors to ensure safety of employees. 
and patients. But that for us is not enough, for we know we're still running at a very low shortage. And responding to the demonstration and expression of frustrated staff, which is an AMS summit was held, convened by the end of February 2020, with an immediate implementation of wellness through partnership with Metropolitan Health. Agreements are being finalized with Nelson Mandela University to support EMS College to implement qualifications requirements by the Department of Higher Education. Honorable members, our call center was found to be best performing in terms of facilitating response to citizens' queries. What pleases most is their ability to respond quickly to queries from citizens and their ability to follow on matters until they are resolved. Our investment in innovation and knowledge management is bearing fruit, which we are now using to respond to COVID pandemic. I am pleased that our call center case management practices have been adopted by the departments and provinces for benchmarking. Some law and I applaud, applaud these warriors who at times are not appreciated. Let me jump immediately to 2021 uh, priorities. Honorable Speaker, our priorities are guided by the provincial 2020-2025 strategic plan, our national health sector strategy 2019 to 2024, the presidential health summit compact, state of the nation address, and the state of the province address by our premier. Our priorities seek to demonstrate our commitment and contribute to a long, healthy, and quality life for the people of the state. In ensuring that health services are delivered without disruptions, the executive management team is entrusted to ensure business continuity of the department. Allow me now to jump immediately to the eight programs of the department. I will start with administration. We're implementing our new organogram, taking into account financial affordability, inclusivity, and sustainability. The filling of posts will be aligned and guided by the migration plan. Our intervention will be enhanced with the investment in ICT strategy, which will facilitate access to reliably and timely information to improve decision making for an efficient and effective service delivery. The department is targeting to appoint operational managers, which will be prioritized according to the classification of clinics. The department will also prioritize the filling of vacant critical posts at SCM at SMS level, including CEOs of Prey. St. Elizabeth, Gomani, and Tower Hospitals. Let me speak to the district health services. Honorable Speaker, we fully participated in the National Parliament NHI public hearings held in November 2019. Our engagements with the communities have shown that to realize universal health coverage for all our people and make NHI a reality in our lifetime, we must adopt a multi pronged approach to provide access to health services in a vast province like ours. With the imminent implementation of the NHI, we are targeting to have 100% of our regional and tertiary hospitals and 30% of our district hospitals, 130 clinics and 18 community health centers to attain and retain ideal hospital and clinical status. Furthermore, we will procure 20 heavy-duty mobile clinic trucks to service some of the under communities in our Honorable place. MEC, <laughs> Honorable MEC, Hello. please take note, Hello. you only have two minutes remaining. Thank you. Thank you. I will jump the non-communicable diseases. I will jump the communicable diseases. I will jump the hospitals, except to say we are having, as document indicates, new areas uh, where we are actually expanding to get into our human resource. In terms of our infrastructure, we are really getting to areas that we've never got into. But in terms of the medical legalists, allow me, Chair, to say we're appreciating the intervention of the Premier. I will jump immediately to the budget and program appropriation for administration. It's 720,803. For district health services, it's 13 million, 13.6 million. Emergency medical services, 1.4 million. Provincial health services is 3.5. Central hospital services, 4.6. Health sciences and training, it's 906,000. Healthcare support services 130,000, health facility management 1,3, and the total share comes to 26,3 billion. In so saying, allow me to speak to the rest that is there in terms of the conclusion. I do want honourable speaker and members, as we are mandated to read in the efficient services, 
to a 6.6 million population of the Eastern Cape. We are doing our best that we can, and the Tuma Mina outreach programs have actually satisfied us to direct us as to where we have to go. We continue to adjust and respond to COVID-19. I beg that we are losing our healthcare workers, and we are sorry about that, and our condolences to their families. I do, however, want to table the 2020-21 to 2024-25 strategy plan, the 2020-21 annual performance plan, and the 2020-21 operational plan. I want to thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you so much, Honorable um, MEC Gomba. Can I now call upon the secretary to lead the last order of the day? Secretariat. Consideration of the repeal of local government laws bill 2019 Eastern Cape. Honorable members, before we continue with the presentation of the report, I wish to advise the House that the WIPS committee has met and agreed that due to the nature of our virtual sittings, the time for debating reports will be proportional, reduced as per the speaker's list. I will now call upon the chairperson of the Standing Committee on Law Review to present the report. Over to you, Honorable Duba. Thank you very much, Speaker. Greetings uh, to the House, the Premier, MSs, and the members of the provincial legislature. In terms of reference, uh, the repeal of local government laws bill 2019 was introduced in the legislature by the MEC responsible for COGTA in the Eastern Cape province on the 14th of March, 2019. This bill was referred by the speaker to the Committee on Law Review in terms of Rule 38 1B of the Standing Rules of the Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature for consideration and reporting to the House. Method, the Committee on Law Review was briefed on the content and effects of the bill by the legal advisor of the Department of Cooperative Governance and traditional affairs and the legal advisor of the legislature on the 9th of April 2019. The bill could not be tabled by, for adoption by the House due to the end of term. The committee considered the bill on the 10th of October 2019 and on the 29th of April 2020. And having satisfied itself with the content of the bill and the fact that there would be no legislative gaps once these pieces of legislation on the bill are repealed resolved to table the bill in the House for the for adoption. Summary of the bill. The purpose of the bill is to repeal obsolete and old order special planning and land use management and other local government laws assigned to the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs in the province of the Eastern Cape in terms of the legislation from the provincial statute book. This is part of the process of rationalizing provincial legislation, which is aimed at ensuring that provincial that provincial legislation A is aligned to the constitution of the Republic of South Africa, B addresses the current needs of the province, C is free from obsolete and discriminatory provision, D is accessible, and E promotes legal certainty and good administration and enhance service delivery. Motion of desirability, Honorable Speaker. The committee is of the view that the bill is necessary to repeal old order legislation in the province and to provide for matters connected therewith. Accordingly, the committee has voted in favor of the desirability of the bill. Report of the Standing Committee on Law Review. The committee hereby presents the report on the repeal of local government laws, bills 2019 for the adoption by the House without amendments. The bill, as introduced, is hereby tabled. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson of the Standing Committee. Are there any questions to the committee members?
I see no hands coming up. There's nothing in my chat box. Are there any comments by the responsible for the responsible MEC? None. I will then go to the speakers list. The first speaker is from the DA, Honorable Knutsi. You've got nine minutes. Starting now. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, and also to greet uh, the Honorable Speaker, the Honorable Premiers and, and other members. Uh, the purpose of this bill is to repeal old order and obsolete legislation from the provincial statute book. Uh, in this case, it was uh, 10 acts, ordinances and regulations. And this is done to ensure that the provincial legislation is aligned to the constitution and that it is free from discriminatory uh, provisions. Because it must be kept in mind uh, that old order legislation, which is legislation which was enforced before the commencement of the interim constitution, remains on, uh, in force until we actually repeal it. Uh, Honorable Speaker, we must further be mindful that before the constitution, interpretation of statutes, statutes was based on parliamentary sovereignty. And before 94, Parliament was sovereign and the courts could only invalidate delegated legislation which did not comply with common law rules of administrative law. Now today, interpretation is based on constitutional supremacy and the spirit and purport of fundamental rights must be taken into account. Thus, value judgments can no longer be ignored. And the courts can now test all legislation against the Constitution. However, all legislation remains in force until it is amended, repealed, uh, declared unconstitutional. And it is also important to understand that the Constitution is not self-executing. So in a constitutional democracy, courts will be able to test and invalidate legislation, and all legislation will have to be interpreted to be compatible with the letter and spirit of the Constitution. Honorable Speaker, the work of this committee is extremely important because the legal position is that all legislation, even legislation that is in conflict with the Constitution, remains in force until one of two things happen. The first is that the legislation is amended or repealed by the legislator or that legislation is amended or declared unconstitutional by the Constitutional Court. Now, common law rules can become abrogated by disuse. However, legislation cannot simply disappear. It must be repealed by a competent body, which in this case and in terms of this bill will be the legislature. Uh, therefore, legislation in conflict with the Constitution is not automatically unconstitutional or invalid. In effect, this means that the vast majority of legislative enactments, including those of the uh, previous provinces and self-governing territory, territories, as well as former independent homelands, remain on the statute book. So the Democratic Alliance supports the repeal of the old order legislation that is discriminatory, uh, discriminatory and unconstitutional. And in light thereof, we also then... Uh, support the repeal of the Local Government Laws Bill 2019 and also the uh, report of the Standing Committee uh, of the Law Review. I thank you. Thank you, Honourable Kutsia. From the EFF, Honourable Kotoi. Honourable Kotoi, you only have five minutes. Yes, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Madam Speaker, the EFF Commissars, Honorable Tekiana and Honorable Marketa, Honorable Fighters and honor Honorable Members of the Eastern Cape Legislature, I greet you. With the advent of constitutional democracy in 1994, the legislation enacted prior to that year remained in force. This has led to a situation where numerous pre-1994 provisions are, constitution, are constitutionally non-compliant. The matter is compounded by the fact that some of these provisions were enacted to promote and sustain the policy of apartheid. Madam Speaker, the repeal of the outdated and absolute laws 
which were unconstitutionally and also discriminatory, is welcome and long overdue. The repeal of some, the repeal of some of the laws that dealt with the land use management is welcome. Since, since the Spatial Planning and the Land Use Management Act provides a framework for spatial planning and land use management. The repeal of the Municipal Act, Yasekansky, whose function are now regulated by the Municipal Finance Management Act, Municipal Structures Act, is a step in the right direction. The repeal of these laws will provide certainty and uniformity, since it will be clear as to which set of laws apply in all the municipalities. This will also avoid unnecessary court litigation over which laws are applicable. The EFF hopes that this step will set the trend wherein apartheid era legislation like the Trespass Act and the Riotas Assemblies Act will also be replaced by the National Assembly. They, as they have the potential to undermine the constitutional rights to freedom of assembly and expression. The EFF hopes that the National Assembly can make use of this free lesson and also repeal outdated and apartheid legislation era legislation. Apart let EFF ET Lom Teto Umdala must be repealed. As we all know that it's in the constitution as the Laula, Madam Speaker. And anything that is inconsistent with the with the constitution is invalid. EFF is the, the law must be repealed. And course, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable uh, Kotoy. I, I, I presume with your last word, you mean that you are accepting the, the, the report. Uh, on the next is up is the UDM, Honorable Filtani. I just want to establish whether he's in the house. He sent a message of apology that he could not connect. I'm not sure if Honorable Mashlati is standing in for him. They've got three minutes. Yeah, yes, I will accept the report. From the UDM, Honorable Filtani, not in the House, and Honorable Mahlati is not here because I've received a formal apology from Honorable Filtani. We'll move over to Honorable Kutsia. Good afternoon, Honorable Speaker. Thank you for the opportunity. Good afternoon to the Honorable Premier, if he's still present, and other colleagues. Yeah, with a little information, available and taking into account the arguments of Honorable Knutzer, the Freedom Front also support this repeal of this act, of this law, sorry. But I must add that it is a big concern that after 26 years of democracy, there are so many laws still on our books which needs to be repealed. And I want to appeal to the, the committee to make a special effort to make sure that we work through our laws of our province to make sure that we update them. Uh, you know, it doesn't help if we are a democracy and we've still got laws that are referring back before 1994. So with this few words, my full support for the repeal of this law as presented by the uh, chairperson of the committee. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Kutsia. <laughs> Honorable Mvenia, you've also got three minutes. Honorable Speaker, can you hear me? Yes, Honorable Mvenia, I've allowed you. You've got three minutes. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, it's a it's unfortunate that uh, we were not part of the committee that took a decision to to, to, to repeal the, um, the, the, the the pieces of legislation. One, we are not aware of the reasons that satisfied the committee. Two, we don't know. We don't have the list 
of these pieces of legislation, one that I can see is Pluma, the one that is that that, that is familiar. Is Pluma and Amakabane Kuchukutu Oyisu and Gus Pluma because as far as I can remember, Spluma was introduced during the time of Honorable New Sealy. I don't know which Spluma is this one because I can't regard Spluma as obsolete or old, Chair, uh, Honorable Speaker. Be that as it may, Chair, um, Honorable Speaker, we support the, the bill because the reasons why we were not there are well known. We were not yet established as the organization. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. We support the bill. We, we are happy that the committee was satisfied. <laughs> Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Under, now we uh, call upon the ANC, Honorable Saziwa, who then has got 14 minutes. Thank you, Honorable Saziwa. You may take the floor. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Greetings to all the members of the legislature, to all, all, all of our support staff of the legislature, all accounting officers of government department in the province as led by Honorable Speaker, the report is tabled in the month of May. And in terms of our history, both uh, globally and uh, in our continent, May is also dubbed as Africa Month, which is intended to undo what the former colonial powers did in 1914, when they did and took the resolutions on how to wrestle and steal the riches of our continent, what used to be called the scramble for Africa. Which therefore, after that, led them in installing some of the unjust laws that were not intended to respond to the needs of the people of Africa. But they were modeled in the culture and value systems of the former colonial powers. Therefore, the context of this report is not only talk about the old order legislation only in terms of South Africa, but in terms of the global context in which former colonial powers still have imprints of their rule in the liberated African states. Therefore, as ANC, we don't see this report only as talking about changing things in South Africa. But that's what we're doing in South Africa in terms of dealing with all old, older legislation. Once we do that, once we see this also permitting throughout the, throughout the African continent. Secondly, secondly this month, is a workers man wherein those that are able to ensure that the economies of the world of Africa, of Southern Africa and, and South Africa are supposed to give and honor the value that workers you know, add in the economy. Therefore, the proceeds of such activities must be felt more by those that are able to ensure that we are able to have strong economies. Thirdly, this report is presented within the, the ambit of the global pandemic that is COVID-19. As the ANC were alive to the fact that though this is affecting everybody else, but our strategies in terms of the context of this report must be able to ensure that those that are less fortunate are assisted in terms of responding to the pandemic. As the ANC, Honorable Speaker, we are part and parcel of the report, and not a single member of the committee had a different view. That is why, therefore, as the ANC, we are proud to say that this resolution, this report, is attesting to one of our resolutions from the fourth national conference. That said, we must have 
laws in the local state that are going to enable our local state to respond to the needs of the, of the people because it is the sphere that is closer to the people. Therefore, these laws are going to help us to easily attend to those challenges that have been there before. We know that in the old, old, old legislation, there was, there was what used to be called Section 10, wherein a particular race would not be allowed to settle in a particular area in the metropolitan area. But in this, in this report, that's therefore in the terms of the report, is done away with. Therefore, to, short, to cut the, the matters short, as the ANC, we support the report. Then you are on the speaker. Thank you, Honorable Saziwe. We now call upon the um, MEC of COCTA, Honorable Ngata. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker, and uh, thanks, Honorable Members. And uh, I wish to welcome uh, the adoption of uh, uh, this bill, repealing the old order legislation. As an important uh, step, uh, in transforming our country and deepening our democracy. And uh, it really paves an important uh, uh, steps to ensure that uh, we implement uh, SPLUMA uh, in our province. And, uh, and once again, uh, the coronavirus has expo exposed uh, the apathy special plans the, 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 the legacy of the apartheid colonial uh, plans. As we see our people uh, flocking in the towns, and interestingly, uh, some have forgotten that kind of a special, you know, uh, of, of an apartheid special path uh, has sort of, uh, you know, resulted into the crisis that we're facing today. As we see our towns being congested, uh, because they were planned for the few. As we see, you know, many, the majority being uh, located in far flung areas, um, typical of what is called Fergenug, that the majority were placed in far flung areas away from services. And therefore, this kind of an arrangement therefore paves this way for us to bring about a, a special uh, development uh, path for our country that ensures integration, that ensures nation building, that ensures access uh, to services for our people. And, uh, and I therefore uh, uh, welcome uh, the, 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 the adoption uh, of uh, the, the bill uh, by the House uh, Honorable Speaker. And uh, thanks very much. Thank you so much, um, Honorable Ngata. Is the, I put the report. Agree. Thank you so much, honorable members. We oppose. We were not there as ATM. As honorable Venya. Where were you? Order. As we come to the conclusion of this day, I think it is just putting. I've heard several members. Um, raising the issue of our provincial commissioner. I think it's just fitting that the legislature also convey our well wishes to her that she has returned back to work um, and that she is an embodiment of those people that have survived COVID-19. We wish her and so many others in our province well on their on their on their on their recovery. But I think um, we also uh, on a sad note uh, must keep in our prayers the Maneli family that they have laid to rest, the uh, Umama Maneli, uh, the wife of the mayor of Amatole District Municipality, the executive mayor council, KC Maneli. Also, uh, tomorrow, um, the United Congregational Church of South Africa in Port Elizabeth will lay to rest. Uh, the late Reverend Samuel Arons. Um, it's it's also a sad uh, day, obviously, for the UCC Church, knowing um, Reverend uh, Arons has been a long fighter for freedom and against the apartheid system. Uh, that he is now at rest and he has fulfilled his race. So we're also wishing the Arons family and the UCC Church as a as a body uh, our our condolences for such a spirited and outspoken man of the cloth. 
Um, with that said, honourable members, so, uh, this concludes the discussion on this matter and the business for the day. The House will adjourn until the 27th, to, uh, 2020 at 2 o'clock through the MS uh, Teams virtual meeting platform. Please, members, try by all means to log in at least 15 minutes before the time. We know uh, it has been established that we are having challenges with the um, network, also due to the to the storms that we that is experienced and the and the weather in the Eastern Cape today. I therefore uh, adjourn this house. Thank you so much. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Joba. Thank you, Honorable Upane. Thank you, Speaker. 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 Thank